Hello and welcome to the year 2023. It is our year of good news. We will be starting the year off with our 14 days prayers and fasting from January 4th to January 15th at 7 p.m. Do well to join us either in person or online. Vision Sunday is on the 22nd of January. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. Habakkuk 2 verse 2. Join us as we reveal the vision for the church for 2023. The last Friday of every month is our night of exploit. A night of word, praise, worship, miracles, signs, and wonder. Come and experience the powerful move of God. Get excited because Young Adult Spark is a back and we will be having a last Sunday of every month. That means this coming January 29th at 7 p.m. We will Master, we thank you this morning. You are so good. You are so kind. You are so faithful that you have taken us through the season of fasting and the season of prayers. That you have visited us for the past 12 days. That we've come into your presence to wait on you. We've come to say that you are good. We've come to say that you are powerful. We've come to thank you in advance for the miracles, signs, wonders. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to demonstrate in power, to demonstrate your love, to demonstrate your miracles. We are subjected under your authority today. We ask you for strength on every side. We ask you for strength from now till the end and for 2023. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you please take your Bibles and let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 31, as I invite the musicians on stage. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, 
verse 31. The scripture says, look what the almighty God says. Amen. Amen. He says, but they that wait upon the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord. They speak to life. It's waiting on God. The fastest way to your miracle is waiting on God. The fastest way to your signs and wonders to experience the love of Jesus is waiting on God. Where you are not rushing to do your own thing in the flesh. And it says, but we that choose to wait on God... We will renew our strength. Our strength will be renewed like the eagle. Our strength will be experienced by those that are around us. When the world says that there is weakening, we shall say our strength is in the Lord Jesus. When people say there is a casting down, we shall declare that there is a lifting up. Because our strength shall be in the Lord. And today you will experience the strength of the Lord as the Holy Spirit gives us. And it says we shall mount up with wings like the eagle. And then 2023, when we're running and chasing after the things of God. When we're running and chasing God. The Bible says we will not be weary. We will not get tired. We will not quit. We will not stop. We will keep running. We will keep running. Because our strength is in the Lord. We will not stop. We will not quit. And then he said, when we walk in the path of God, when we walk in the path of God, we will not faint. We will not faint. Because the strength of Jehovah has come. Those that wait upon the Lord. I want to encourage you this morning that as a church, we are right in the center of what the Lord wants us to do. And you have been faithful and I have been faithful. And the God that we serve is faithful. To bring us to what he has promised us in 2023. And that is the good news. So Lord, I thank you that we are strengthened. Can we all lift up our hands? to Jesus please Lord look at our hands we say Lord we are weak but let your strength come we are saying that we are feeble but we are going to live here as the lion of the tribe of Judah we say that we are faint but we are going to live here with the power of the Holy Ghost if you are in agreement shout Amen as we worship Jesus
Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you just want to be silent before God. Just want to be silent. Just the keyboard. Just the keyboard. Just be silent before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah.
morning, and we wait on you this afternoon, that your Shekinah glory will pierce through this place, that your Shekinah glory, Lord, will be experienced and felt. We have come that you will lay the puzzles in place, Lord, that when it's all said and done, you will take all the glory and we will receive the blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may please be seated in the house of God. In a minute, I'm going to invite Sister Nicola. The way God gave Pastor George the program for our tearing service is that it's a puzzle. There is a way God wants to build us this morning. And I don't want you to miss out. I want you to be plugged in as the Holy Spirit deals with us. Puzzle after puzzle. And it's all going to come together as one. Minister Nicola, it is time. Praise Jesus. most important thing in our life to preach the gospel and I'm I have this privilege thank you so much Pastor George and Pastor Harriet for your faithfulness in this house and for this privilege that I can teach one of the world that is in this session first so the first session that we have is the power of repentance and consecration and uh, as I go along you will see how important in our life is the repentance. God showed me that repentance is a cleaning. It's a cleaning. And the cleaning in our life is the most important every day that we need to do. Repentance is the most powerful conversation that you can have with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. This is the repentance is the most powerful conversation that you can have with God. When you are on your knees, we are fighting our, our battles. And the believers who goes on their knees and humble before the Lord, they win all the battles. So this is the thing that I want to say to you. You need to clean yourself every day. Hallelujah. Through God, when you go on your knees and humble yourself before him, you win all your battles. Maybe the devil will come and say you have weakness, you have this and this and this. You have struggles in your life, afflictions, oh, or, and ungodly desires. But when you go on your knees and you give that all to Jesus, he will forgive you all. And as today we wait on our God, on your knees you, we have to wait on our God. So this is the thing that the Lord put in my heart and I'm so thankful that I can preach about this a little exaltation. So I want to let you know from which areas we need this cleaning. I want to tell you that we need from our mind, cleaning in our mind, cleaning in our soul, and cleaning in our heart. And I will tell you why. The mind is in such a way that every day you receive lots of information negative informations, informations that you hear, you see, and the, the desires, what is in your mind, will go to your heart. So from your mind, you need a cleaning every day on your knees. Then the soul. The soul is in such a way that uh, the soul wants to control our bodies. So that's why your will, your mind, and your emotions will want to take over your body. That's why you need to go and repent for your soul. And the heart is the most important thing. In Jeremiah 17, 9, Bible calls our heart that our heart are deceitful and beyond cure. 
So that's why our heart in such a way is that the Lord is searching what we hide in our hearts. There can be some strong emotion of joy, love, and peace, and happiness, but don't forget, don't forget that we can find in our hearts some desires, ungodly desires. We can find there some abstinence or lust. The lust is that you will want something that your mind is telling you to have. And if you don't go and repent from that, in such a time will come that this lust will come and will be the sin. Not only the lust, but it will be a sin. It will be a sin. So that's why your passions, your desires, even if they are from God or if they are from, doesn't please God, you have to bring to God. So this is the thing that God gave me and ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness to wash you, to cleanse you, and to, to give you the right spirit. The right spirit, as David says in uh, Psalm 51, uh, the, verse, the verse is 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is so important to pray this kind of prayer as David. As a David, he knew that he sins again against God. And because that he was feeling so sorry, he couldn't just go away. He couldn't run because he knew the word of God. So he sinned not only against Lord, but against his law, the word of God. So that's why he went and he was repenting and he was asking for a new heart, for a new heart. This is the thing that we need to ask for right spirit within me and also for the clean heart you need to give me, Lord. So I have a few points that uh, how we're going to pray today. That was just a quick exaltation because, because we have a lot of things and you will hear the word of God today so many times. So that was so quick today. And uh, so the first point is that we're going to pray today is that you have to say in your heart, God, I am aware of my sin, of my desires, ungodly desires. I am aware of my mind that, is wo that wants to destroy me. And I am confessing them all to you, O oh God. Hallelujah. The second point will be, Wash me and cleanse me, O oh Lord. The third point will be renew a right spirit within me. This means, God, I want to obey all your commandments. This means a right spirit within me. This means I want to obey all the time your word. The fourth point is, or the fourth prayer we'll pray today is create in me a clean heart. And the fifth point is, teach me from my sins, from my mistakes, so I can help others. I will invite Sister Loretta, and she will lead us in these prayers. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can we all rise up on our feet? We are here to repent before God. We are going to ask God to create in us a clean spirit. We are going to ask God to wash us. Sister Nicola gave us the point that we are going to, and we're going to go through. I'm going to repeat them so that we know what we are praying about. He said, the first prayer, I am aware of my sins. I'm aware of my desires. It says your heart is where everything comes from. Number two, we are going to pray to God to wash us and cleanse us. We are going to ask God to wash us and cleanse us. And we're 
going to ask God to renew the right spirit in us. We are about to tarry in the presence of God. We've already started. We need to be in an alignment with the Holy Spirit. And we are going to ask God to create in us a clean spirit. And then we're going to ask God to help us to obey him, to be able to abstain from sins, to teach us the right way so that we will abstain from sin. So I want you to open your mouth and start as God ask God that God I'm aware of my sins I know I'm a sinner I ask you that you will wash and cleanse me this morning my sins are before me Lord only you have I sinned against so we are asking God that Father Lord cleanse us we plead the blood over us this morning Father Lord do not look upon our iniquities Father Lord we ask you to cleanse us We come before you with a broken and contrite heart. That, Father, Lord, we have sinned against you. We ask that you will cleanse us and make us whole. We ask you that you will cleanse us from all filthiness. We ask that you will make us as white as snow. And, Father, Lord, we ask that you will create in us a clean heart, a new heart. Father, Lord, our hearts are deceitful. We ask you that you will cleanse us. We ask that you will create in us a new heart. A clean heart that is able to obey you, that is obeyed to listen to you, that is before you. Father Lord, we ask, we ask that you will renew a right spirit in us. This is an intimate moment between you and God. We ask that you will clean us. Wash us with the blood. Wash us with the blood. We are coming before you blameless and clean. Your word says if we confess our sins to you, you are able and just to wipe us everything off. You will give us a clean slate, Lord. Plead the blood this morning. Plead the blood this morning. Plead the blood this morning. Only you, God, have we sinned against. Only you, God, have we sinned against. Wash us, Lord. Wash us, Lord. against you teach me the ways father lord teach us the ways not to sin against you teach us a ways to obey your commandments 
Father, Lord, teach us that we may not stray away from you. Father, Lord, teach us not to sin against you. Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us back to alignment. We thank you for washing us and cleansing us. We thank you for creating in us a clean heart. Our hearts are deceitful. Father, Lord, we thank you that you have cleansed our mind. You have renewed our minds. Father, Lord, we thank you that you have renewed the right spirit in us. That we will be able to please and exalt you and obey you. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Withholding nothing, I surrender all. 
no condemnation in us that are in Christ Jesus. Keep plugging in. The puzzles are being put together. Our next speaker is none than Mr. Alex, a woman that carries the word of God. Such a calm spirit, but backed by the Holy Spirit. When she speaks, the Lord confirms it. She's going to talk to us about a subject that is so heavy. But I know the Holy Spirit will break down our walls as he heals us. Please help me welcome Minister Alice. Praise God. Thank you. 
you, Father. It is so good, good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, so early, very early. <laughs> you know, I wasn't sure I was liking that idea when you said it, but you know what? It's a great idea to just get up, get ready, and come into the house of the Lord, to sit at the feet of Jesus, to sup at his feet, and to just remain in his presence and to wait on him, to wait on him. So this morning, I am going to be speaking with you briefly about inner healing and forgiveness. Inner healing and forgiveness. And sometimes the word forgiveness is not a nice word with us <laughs> because it means that we have to let go of some things that we would like to hold on to. And if you're in this room this morning or if you're hearing my voice online, you've been hurt, you've been wronged, and you have reasons that you could hold on to unforgiveness. But the Lord bades us differently. He says that when we're wronged, we need to forgive. And sometimes it's very hard to do so. We hear the term forgive and forget, but it's not easy. Sometimes we say we forgive, but we, we remember for a long, 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 long time. <laughs> and you know what? I've heard people talk about something that happened maybe 30 years ago, 35 years ago. And it was sad once um, a friend of mine was telling me about her friend who was now hitting 80 years old and was still holding on to unforgiveness. And I said, God, that would not, by your grace, that would not be me. I have no desire to do that. So the word of God gives us a blueprint. And the blueprint is not based on our personalities. Sometimes we say because of our personality, we hold on to things. Because of our background, we hold on to things. It's a learned behavior. Sometimes we see it done in family. And so we continue to do the same. But God's word gives us a blueprint I'm going to read this morning from Psalm 66 and verse 18. And it says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He will not hear me. And I thought, what a petrifying thought to think that I could ever go before the Lord to ask of him something and he would not hear me because I'm regarding iniquity in my heart. One of the definitions of iniquity is a wicked act. So what it's saying is unforgiveness is a wicked act. You know why? Because it's something that is willfully done. I willfully make that decision not to forgive. And so, therefore, God's word says it's wicked because you have the choice to forgive, but you choose not to do it. So, if unforgiveness is a wicked act, and I want to read the scripture in a different light, I would say, if I regard this wicked act in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And all of a sudden, it's not sugar-coated anymore. It doesn't say if I regard iniquity, because sometimes we don't know what the defining term of iniquity is. But if I say, if I regard this willful act in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I think it will drive me into the presence of God to say, Father, forgive me and help me. I need your help. Help me to let go of this wicked act that I'm holding in my heart. 
Then again, in Ephesians 4 and verse 31, it says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Just as God in Christ forgave you. Just as God in Christ will keep forgiving you in the future. He forgave you. He's forgiving you. And he will continue to forgive you in the future. We can trust him to do that. So therefore, we are to pattern our lives after this forgiving Christ. We are to forgive and we are to keep forgiving. So I've done a talk for a women's group a while ago and I called it living forgiving. Living forgiving. It means every day when I get up, I expect to forgive somebody because somebody's probably going to do something against me, most likely. So I live in a realm. Sorry, Nicola. <laughs> So I live in a realm of forgiveness. I expect that when I go out, someone may do something, so I'm already poised to forgive you. I'm already poised to forgive you. So when it comes, it's nothing. I forgive. When we're tender-hearted, we cannot be unforgiving. So if we're unforgiving, then we are in direct opposition to the wor word that bids us to be tender-hearted and to have control over what we do. God hasn't made us. He hasn't mandated that we would do something that we cannot do. Then in Proverbs 17, verse 9, the word says, He who covers a transgression seeks love. But he who repeats the matter separates intimate friends. You know, you have a friend and you're like that tight with your friend. But when something comes up and you go ahead and you repeat that to somebody else, the power of that injury is so much that it separates even intimate friends. And so we are to be mindful of what we do. When you go to repeat something, be careful what you're repeating because sometimes you don't know the lasting ramification of what you're doing. You're causing injury that can go on for a long, 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 long time. Sometimes some people take it to their grave with them. They never let that go. So, Today, we are to seek to cover a transgression and not to separate intimate friends. Not to separate, and don't blab, and don't blab anything. <laughs> Just don't blab. You know, keep the mouth shut, right? Sometimes if you know something, take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, he's not going to go and tell anybody. Speak to Holy Spirit. He is there to help you. He is there to help you. And you know what? If you're praying for somebody that has done aught against you, it's hard to pray for somebody while you're hating them or while you're not forgiving them. You will find that as you pray for them, the Holy Spirit will work so much, such a work of grace in your spirit that you will want to forgive. And if you're doing that, maybe, maybe, if you're wearing that in such a way, and I see forgiveness on you, when I go and I want to call you your name, and I want to say, Pastor George, I might just make a slip and say, hello, forgiveness, right? Because you're wearing it, you know? Or I might see Nicola, and I want to say Nicola, but I say, hello, love, because you're wearing that robe of love in such a way that, that's what I see when I see you. And then in the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew 6, verse 12, he teaches us to pray. And one of the things he says is, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Or forgive us our trespasses. 
Forgive us the wrongs we have done against you, just as you for, we forgive our debtors. So if we are not forgiving and releasing people, how is it we expect to go before God and ask him to forgive us? Right? These are sobering thoughts. In the story of the prodigal son, the father had already give, forgiven the son. You know, when he was standing there waiting for the son and looking down the street when the son was coming, he for, when the son came, he fell on his father's neck. The father hugged him, embraced him. The son had not asked him yet to forgive him. And so we are to have that kind of spirit within us. I can forgive those who have wronged me. Can you? Would you seek to forgive those who have wronged you? This is by an act of your will. You can make the decision to forgive those who have wronged you. You know, unforgiveness, Sister Loretta, is like pus. Pus is nasty, eh? Oh, it's bad. It's bad. You know, and unforgiveness festers like pus. Something that sits in your bone and you just carry it with you. It's not desirable. So if I can entreat you to do today, as we go into the next moments of prayer when I hand back, I would entreat you to go deep and ask the Lord to forgive to, and to help you to forgive those who have wronged you. Ask the Lord for grace to forgive. His grace and his mercy to do so is always extended, ready, and available. How can, what things can help you to do that? Take captive your thoughts. Take captive your thoughts. Be mindful of where your mind is going. You know, I've sat and talk to people and in the conversation I just see as they keep the facial expression changes because the more they think about the hurt that someone did against them the more they get angry and angrier and angrier so take captive your thought your thoughts quote quote God's life-giving word in your situation Romans 12 2 says I will not be conformed, I'm personalizing it, to this world, but rather I will be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I will not be conformed to this world, but I will be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Praise God. We are able to do this. A renewed mind is a forgiving mind. A renewed mind. If, if you're not forgiving, your mind is not renewed. So then ask Father to renew your mind. See yourself as a carrier of life. What is it that you want to deposit? I am carrying and I will deposit. I will carry love and I will deposit love. I will carry forgiveness. I will deposit forgiveness. I will carry mercy. I will deposit mercy. Be a carrier. Be a deposit. Carry love, healing, forgiveness, and make a decision to forgive. Um, if I would say that there are prayer points that we would pray regarding this, I would say we can ask the Lord to forgive us of holding on to past hurt. Past hurt. We can ask the Lord to help us to release everyone that we are holding unforgiveness toward. Because when we are holding it toward them, we are holding it it's, it's a sin against God. It's an infraction against God. And ask the Lord to make us useful in the kingdom, in his kingdom for the end time harvest. Praise God.
we're asking for grace. We're asking for his mercy, the spirit of forgiveness to come into our hearts. Let's pray. We're asking for grace, oh Lord. Grace, oh Lord, your mercies, oh God. The spirit of forgiveness, oh God, for anybody that has hurt us, oh Jesus. We ask that you help us forgive and let go. Now we're praying oh, that we, we ask God to let us let go of the wickedness in our hearts. Any any form of wickedness that holds us back from our, our blessings, any form of hurt that is holding us back. We are asking God for the grace to let it go. We are asking God for the grace to let it go. We cannot hold it on anymore. We are asking that God will come in and take control. Give us that spirit, that heart to let it go. Any wickedness.
Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a clap. Give the Lord a clap. In Psalm, the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verse 3 to 5, whilst we are standing. That's a very powerful scripture that I want us to look into it. Psalm 32, 3 to 5. It goes on to say, when I refused to confess my sins, my body wasted away. And uh, it, this one is, uh, the King James says that when I kept silent, my bones grew old. And it says that through my groanings all day long. You know, when it comes to inner healing and unforgiveness, Sister Alex has done a great job. Celia has helped us. And thank you, Sister Nicola, for the awesome word. You know the Lord is in this place. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Let me tell you a secret. The, the, the proof of God's approval is his presence. If you're doing anything and you cannot know the presence, stop it. If his presence doesn't seal it, he didn't command it. Yeah. And we know that the Lord commanded this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want my bones to waste away. I don't want to be young carrying so much weight. And in this moment, in this inner healing, I want us to focus on one person that we usually ignore. That is ourselves. We forgive everyone but ourselves. Sometimes I ask the Lord, say, God, it's like, why do I always have to forgive? Because people think you are strong and you are powerful and you are anointed and, and you know, and for that reason, and you know your vessel cannot hold iniquity or pain. So you have to let go. And so many of us, sometimes we are walking around, we are hurt, we are wounded. We have inner pain. We, we are broken for forgiving because what the person did to you, it was so painful. It was so hurtful. But by the word of the Lord, he had to let go. And then number two, what you did to yourself. You see, you disappointed yourself, you couldn't forgive yourself. You see, your goals that you said by age 30, you'll be here. That inner pain has not been released. That disappointment that you, 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 you look at yourself and you say that, you know what, well, you are more than this. But what is wrong with me? If all is well, Lord, why am I like this? If, if I am anointed, why am I not moving forward? If the glory is on me, why am I not breaking through? And you cannot forgive yourself because you think you should have prayed more. You thought you could have fasted more. Maybe if you have given more, it would have been better. Maybe if you have done this, you could have been better. And, and we keep it in our heart. And we are not able to let go. And so we forgive everyone. But we are not able to release ourselves. Sometimes we're like, you know, why did I gain this weight? Why did I go with that guy? Why did I let him sleep with me? Why, why, why did I get into business with that one? Why did I let that boss treat me that way? And you are not able to forgive yourself. Why, why am I not able to cross this line, Lord? And you're not able to forgive yourself because you thought, now you begin to blame yourself. Maybe I didn't pray enough. I didn't fast enough, I didn't love enough, I didn't serve enough, and God is saying, no, you are keeping things and your bones is getting dry. And today, I just
just want us to go to God and say, Lord, I forgive myself. Yes, I forgive myself. What you want to do with me, you will do with me. Uh, it's not what I am doing to myself that will change. Lord, I forgive myself. Lord, I forgive myself. Lord, I forgive myself. Online or in-house, would you lift up your voice and begin to forgive yourself. Release yourself. As you release the person that wounded you, as you release the, the thing that happened to you, as you let go, you know, this is not the most easiest moment, but it is the only, because the glory of the Spirit of God is here, you release yourself, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for allowing that abusive relationship to continue. Forgive yourself for disappointing God. Forgive yourself. Father, we stand in the place of and we release the inner pain. The unforgiveness towards ourselves. We plead the blood. Soften our hearts, Lord. Soften our bones that have been so dry. Lord, let the blood, 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 we plead the blood. Talk to God, talk to God. We plead the blood, talk to God. We plead the blood, talk to God. We plead the blood, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Lord, the inner pain against myself, the unforgiveness towards myself, the hurt towards myself, the disappointment towards myself. I've not been able to release that person. Let ask the Lord to help you to release that person. In a moment, I have two more minutes. There are certain names you need to mention. Maybe no one is supposed to know. But there are some people, they've hurt you so much. Do you know there are some people, they hurt you so much, even when you mention their name, you cringe. When you hear their name, you shake. That is the person God wants you to forgive. And you're going to mention their name. And you will say, John, today I forgive you. You're going to say, you're going to mention it, George, today I forgive you. I release you to your destiny. You are meant to do well. Mention your name first. Forgive yourself. Talk to God. Release yourself. Release yourself into the greatness. Let the Lord heal you from the depth of your heart. Forgive yourself. Repent. Say, Lord, I forgive myself as you heal me from the inner wound. if I can hold you in my heart and then we tell people I will show you where the power lies it's pride you know it is pride that makes us say certain things it is pride that makes us do certain things you know there was a day I needed to forgive someone as pastors also forgive we we are hurt by people more than anything literally almost every day but because our covenant flows through a clean vessel you can allow that to be you can hold on to please I don't know who that person is that you have kept few seconds there was a day I went on a retreat and I was doing a deliverance and one of the people that were part of the teaching team whilst the message was going on just an atmosphere of a heavy presence like this said to me pastor 
I want to talk to you. Do you know this thing that I'm about to talk to you, I've kept it for 40 years. It says, I was a young and brilliant accountant and I married some young man who was the best person of my dream. And then that is where my life shifted. And it says from that time, I used to come up with makeup because I didn't want anyone to see what has been done to me. It says I was abused so much. And I vowed that I would succeed so I can cause men pain. And God had healed her, but it was on the top. And she used to tell me, as I read knows this person, she used to call it her secret pain. In other words, nobody touches that side. You can ask me for money, I'll give it to you. You can ask me for blessing, I'll bless you. But you talk to me about forgiving that guy. He says he used to imagine how this guy would die. Maybe yours is not like that. But if you cannot mention the person's name and bless them from your heart, you've not released them. And if the blessing, your blessing is just a, a religious blessing, you have not released them. This is what we call it inner healing. It's not something small. The person you trusted, but they took what belonged to you and they went away. Something happens to you. A piece of you dies. <sighs> Let's ask for grace to release people. Mention their name right now. You have one more minute. Mention their name and release them. Mention their name. Release them. No one is exempted. It can be you. Maybe you did it to someone. Maybe you hurt someone. And that is why when it comes to inner healing and forgiveness, we don't say them. We say, Lord, the ones that have hurt me that I know, the ones I don't know, I repent. I forgive. Forgive me. I release this person. I release that person. As a church, those that have hurt us, we release them. We forgive them. Those we have hurt, we repent and we forgive. Please lift up your hands and let's pray one prayer. If you can, say with me, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, today I give up Oh, say it properly. Say, I give up. I give up. Anyone that I have kept, I release them in my heart. Those I have caused pain and those that have caused me pain, I release them. I forgive them. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I am hurt. Lord, I am broken inside. But today, by the power of the blood, by the power of the cross, I receive grace. And I release everyone. My heart is for you, Jesus. may be seated. Thank you, Lord. 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 For some of you, there are some names I want you to write down. There are some names you have not been able to bring it to your comprehension. Write it down. One of the sessions that we have today later on is called 
altered at the altar. Altered at the altar. It will be a session that we will have later on. And we will allow everyone to just come. At that, in that session, we won't want anyone to sit on their seat. We will all come to the altar and cry before the Lord. That he alter us, he changes us. Hallelujah. I can see what the Lord is doing already. Do you know this church will never be the same? Yes. Yes. What do I do? I have to teach my session. The Lord is going to help me. <laughs> How do I turn? Hmm. Jesus, help me. My session is the power of deliverance. The power of deliverance. And the question I want to ask myself is, or we want to ask is, if you are forgiven, if you are cleansed by the Lord, if you're a child of God, why do you need deliverance? Because most of the time, a lot of people ask the question, if I am forgiven, if I am a child of God, why do I need deliverance? Understand that we are spirit, soul, and body. Our spirit is usually encounter or our spirit encounters the cross. And our spirit is instantly forgiven. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. How? Spirit has changed. Spiritually, God, in, it says that even I am he that blots your transgression and remembers them no more. Come unto me, all you that are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. And so that rest immediately, as you stand at the altar or sitting here right now, that rest is taken away by the Spirit of the Lord. But just because that rest is taken away doesn't mean that the pain you were feeling is not there. God has done it immediately spiritually. Your spirit is washed. Your spirit is forgiven. And yet your soul has issues in need to deal with. And the problem with your soul is that the emotions are unstable because of how it engages with things. Your mind is philosophical. It has too much things to argue. Do you know the average person, before they hear the word of God, thinks about it so many times before they accept? Because remember, before you came to the house of God, You've lived a certain life for a long time to the point that now that God says your sins are forgiven, yes, your spirit man is forgiven, but your mind is arguing, is it true? And that is why Sister Alice taught us that we are to renew our mind, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Not to conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So why do we need deliverance? And what is deliverance? Deliverance is the, when the power of God is released to break anything that is contrary to the word of God happening in your life. Deliverance is, you see, it's just that our world has made deliverance to become so spooky. But man of God, deliverance is not that spooky. No, it's deliverance is not supposed to be spooky. Because your mind is under constant attack. There is a battleground going on, a battle going on in your mind. Every day things are happening in your mind. And you are saying, how do I break free? How am I going to be delivered from this? So when we talk about deliverance, deliverance is breaking free from the consequences of sin. 
Let me say it again. Deliverance is the power of God, the blood of Jesus, the word of God, breaking you and I free from the consequences and the repercussions of sin. Remember, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so any time sin begins to work in our life, certain form of death is released to the body, to the mind, to the soul. And we need to be delivered from it. And deliverance is from that which the enemy makes sure that you pay for the consequences of what you have done. And he doesn't joke with it. Whereas Christians can be nice, the devil is not nice. He expects that you are poor for life. You need deliverance. He expects that you are sick for life. You need deliverance. He expects that you, you carry on forgiveness for life. You need deliverance. He expects that your mind is not sound for life. You need deliverance. He expects that you are not able to fulfill the purposes of God for your life. For life, you need deliverance. And that is why the power of deliverance, it's not only when we, we, we know deliver, the greatest form of deliverance you can have is in your mind. Casting down imagination and every vain thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Somebody say deliverance. Somebody shout deliverance. Being delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. And so when we talk about deliverance, it's not for select few people. It's deliverance, as long as you live on earth, everyone, one way or the other, will need deliverance. Everyone. Everyone. Do you know the greatest deliverance you and I need this morning? Do you know what it is? Or you want to know? If you want to know, wave, let me see. Say, Lord, deliver me from me. I'm telling you, the greatest deliverance is not from the devil. The greatest deliverance is not from witches. Witches have no power, man of God. They have no power when I'm in, in alignment. Say, Lord, deliver me from me. Because I am the one that refused to hear that your word is true. Deliver me from me. I, I refuse to believe that your word is true. That I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That you have anointed me that silver and gold belongs to the Lord. And the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to you. All I need to do is walk in alignment. Deliver me from my pride. Deliver me from afflictions of course. De deliver me Lord. You realize that most of the time we give the devil too much power. But today... You are taking back your territories, starting from deliverance from you. Because when you are delivered from you, the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. And you will know the hope of your calling. And the exceeding greatness of the power of God that works in you. Lord, deliver me from me. I'm not trying to be delivered. Uh, the power of darkness, it's a command. Witches and wizard, it's a command. You will see it happen today. It's a command. We command in the name of Jesus. They shake. Some of us, we don't need to command. We show up and they disappear. You, you carry the same power. But you have refused to walk in the will and the power of God. And that is why Christians can be weak. But today, we are being delivered from us. Not believing that the word of God is true. Not believing that God can make us greater than we think. That God can make one person, one person in this room, one, one person, take charge of a territory for him. One person can write the check for the expense of this house easily. 
But we can believe that God can make us great. It is in this belief that makes people not even be able to give tithe and offering. Say, Lord, deliver me from me. Because when you deliver me from me, I will believe your word. I will walk in your ways. I will walk in your anointing. Power will flow. Do you realize that when Saul was delivered from himself, now he walked and the handkerchief and aprons from Peter and the apostles began to heal. I see that happening in your life. I said, I see that happening in your life. But it starts with the power of deliverance. When the blood cuts off that link, when you ask God to deliver you by the power of the blood and the power of the word, the greatest agent of deliverance is the word of God. Yes. That's why I agree and I want to quote it again. That's why Sister Alex scripture was so powerful that until the renewal comes, people of God, you cannot be delivered. I've seen people that comes to the house and we pray for them and you can see strange manifestation. But if they go home and they don't renew their mind, they will go back to their issue because it's a stronghold. It's a, what is a stronghold? Something that holds you captive, that you do without thinking. It's a stronghold. Yes. What you do without thinking, that's why there are certain behaviors you do it without thinking, and it destroys your life. There are certain reactions. You see the reason why we need deliverance? Oh, man, Lord. But I, I will stick with my time. Today, I am me, I'm, I'm with time. Amen. Hallelujah. Me too, I'm delivered. Amen. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Ooh, praise God. Can we stand on our feet? We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And the prayer you're going to pray, the first prayer, of course, is by the power of the blood of Jesus and by the word of God. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, deliver me from me. Deliver me from my fears, my pride, that which allows me not to yield to your word. Say, Lord, as I pray today, pray deliver today. me. Deliver pray me, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. 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 Being delivered from the strongholds of life. In the name of Jesus, we renounce. In the name of Jesus, Rato Peketalibasume. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lekon de Minisali Katalaba, Bandolo Shalaba Kapene, Masipeliyanto, Elemanoto Lobo Sinyantaya, Rekon Tanto Labaya, Bandolo Sinyantaya, by the power of the Holy Spirit, oh, by the power of the blood, deliver me, oh, by the blood, deliver me, in the name of Jesus, me kondolo bo shati yate, le brondolo bo sha, 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 breke de bele bele be, le kondele be si atabaya, I need to be liberated, I need to be deliberated, oh Lord, I'm coming out, I break free from the chain. From the pain of afflictions, afflictions and shame. In the baraka to me nasi le baganto, man tele bezu anda la bataya. Rakata kata, seke de belebe. You are being delivered. Every event against your life, every agent of the devil, man tolo bosi akata. Deliver me from demonic oppressions. Deliver me from sicknesses. 
and diseases. Deliver me from the spirit of poverty. Deliver me from every in the name of Jesus. Emotional pain, emotional inconsistency, spirit of sorrow. Deliver me, Lord, by the power of the blood. By the power of the blood. By the power of the blood. In the name of Jesus, cry out, Lord, I pull down. Ain't no malabalatea. Lord, I receive my deliverance in the name of Jesus. Lord, your deliverance is now. Your deliverance is now. Your deliverance is now. Your deliverance is now. In the name of Jesus. Your deliverance is now. In the name of Jesus. your mind please this is not let me tell you something I know the Holy Ghost is moving but this is not a moment of being like a physical or being soft deliverance means what is yours a spirit has taken over a form of a spirit has held you captive addiction poverty lack shame emotional inconsistency you are not able to possess what is yours you are praying I break free I break out I come out whatever is holding me captive let me tell you something you need to be delivered to possess your wealth and riches Amen. I said you need to be delivered don't you think something is holding your millions you need to be delivered to walk in the anointing. Don't you think something is holding you to not walk with God the way you are supposed to? Because you are supposed to be so anointed. So you need to be delivered. You, you are prayed. I break free. Please come and lead us for five minutes. La katabalaha. I want us to do something. Even Einstein said, if you do the same thing over and over again, and you're expecting the same result, it's insanity. So I want us to move around where we are. Move around from your comfort zone. The, 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 the church is big enough. Move around. Some can be at the back. The altars are open. Move around. I don't see you moving. Move around. Five minutes, we're about to go to war. Sometimes your ammunition needs to change. Sometimes you got to catch the enemy off guard. Sometimes you got to tell the enemy, I need room. And if you know how to pray the Holy Ghost, you pray the Holy Ghost. If you don't know, you pray, you understand. Me. But we're going to pray and pull down strongholds. We're going to pull down strongholds. If you want to clap, go ahead and clap. It's deliverance session. Masaka Toria Babaya. Rebebe Seke Toria Mama Santaria Babaya. Rebebe Seke Toria Mama Ya Babaya. Rebebe Seke Toria Mama Ya Babaya. Rebebe Masaka Toria Mama Ya Masaka Toria Somebody you are in the war front. Rebebe Seke Toria Mama Saka Toria Babaya. As the Lord to deliver you this morning. Rebebe Seke Toria Mama Saka Toria Babaya. Rebebe Seke Toria Mama Saka Toria Babaya. Every stronghold in your mind, holy 
Jesus loses his power. Amen. Every power of darkness controlling the destiny of people, controlling the wealth and riches of you and your bloodline, controlling your health, controlling your walk with God, controlling your mind, making you not fulfill your divine purpose and assignment by the power of the blood. By the power of the name of Jesus, as I lift up my hands, I decree your freedom. Amen. I command every spirit of anger, every spirit of rebellion, every spirit of sicknesses and affliction, every spirit Amen. of poverty, every generational curses Amen. affecting your family, affecting your life. The things you know, the things you don't know, by the power of the blood, be delivered. Amen. Be set free. Amen. Be loosed. Amen. Break free from the chains. Amen. Let the chains break. Amen. Now, I want you to lift your right hand, and you're going to do something like this. And when I say, in the name of Jesus. You're going to shout. Let the chains break. Amen. Are you ready? No, 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 no. Let the chains break. 
In the name of Jesus, let the chains against your family, let the chains against your finances, let the chain against your health, let the chains against marriages in this house, let the chain against the youth of this house, let the chains against the destiny of the people of this house and around the world, let the chains against your blessings and your favor, let the chains Oh my God, against your lifting, let the chains we declare any evil eye, any evil machination, any evil contentions, what have been programmed in the womb of the spirit against your life, against your blessings, against your lifting, by the power of the blood, by the power of the name of Jesus, we declare your freedom. Now, I want to declare over you, when I say in the name of Jesus, shall speed. Are you ready? Listen to me. Some of you need to run around. Some of, because you've been slow for years. Yes, yes, yes. In the name of Jesus, shall speed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, speed, 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 all around. Yes, 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 speed. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout, somebody shout hallelujah, somebody shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, there is power in the name of Jesus, shout hallelujah, speak.
everyone, everyone clap. I see, you know, God always released a certain secret army and ammunition. And this morning, our secret is a clap. Yes, 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 clap, clap. More seconds. Go ahead. Clap, clap. Now jump, 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 jump. Twenty more seconds. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. be an understanding of what's next. So I want us to quickly go through the book of Matthew chapter 12 verse 43 to 45. Talking to you about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We just went through a session of deliverance. And you need to understand the importance of maintaining this joy, this power, this anointing. And there is a way you must understand. But the scripture says, when an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into dry places. And it doesn't find rest there. Then the demonic spirits... I'm only paraphrasing what the word of God says. Says to itself, I will return to the body. 
I will return to the house where I left. So God has delivered you and I. He has taken the spirit of sorrow, lack, poverty, sicknesses from us. Curses from us. All those demonic activities were backed by a demon that needed a body to express itself. So when you go through deliverance, the spirit is cast out like the Lord just did for us. But the spirit goes to dry places, according to Matthew. And then the spirit cannot find another body. So it says to itself, I'm going back to where I came from. And the plan is to occupy. But see, the scripture says, Jesus said, when it comes back, it finds that the house, when he finds that the body that he left is empty, it's not occupied. If there is something not in there, and I'm going to show you that something, which is the Holy Spirit, then what the Spirit does is this. It goes back and takes back seven more wicked demons. Not just himself. He brings his friends that are stronger than him. He brings more demons that are stronger, seven of them. And their plan is to go and live back in the body. So when you used to be a thief and you steal pencils and you are at a tiring service, and the spirit of stealing is cast out of you. The demonic spirit called thief, because Satan is the one that steals, kills, and destroys. He goes back to bring seven more wicked demons. So not only are you stealing pens, now you become an arm robber. Now you become a liar. Now you become a murderer. Because there are seven demonic spirits that has now come back. And the final condition of that person is worse off than they started. So Jesus revealed something powerful to us. And we cannot miss the powerful thing that Jesus revealed to us in Matthew chapter 12. What Jesus is saying is that if you and I are not filled with the Holy Spirit and we are not filled with his word, when the enemy leaves us and he comes back, we are worse off than we started. And that's what makes people say that you are a believer, but I don't see your life as a believer. But there is a promise. The promise that Jesus gave us is the promise of the Holy Spirit. Because when the strong demons come and they see the Holy Spirit, they don't even try to come in. They go to find another body. Who is the Holy Spirit? For us Christians and for us believers, it's been revealed to us that we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now see, the thing about the Holy Trinity is this. You cannot understand it with your human mind. It's revealed to you in your spirit. God the Father... God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are one. They are not in ranking as God the Head is one, God the Son is two, and God the Holy Spirit is three. No. It's one God expressed in three Godhead. So, 
Jesus says something, right? In Matthew 29, 19, when he sent us, he said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Paul also will say that may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the three of them always work together as one. So when we go through deliverance, the Holy Spirit is a creator. When we go to the book of Genesis, the Bible says the Holy Spirit was hovering. He was hovering. The Holy Spirit hovers. He was moving until he heard the word of the Father, let there be light. And he quickly went into action and there was light. The Holy Spirit, when he occupies your body, waits to hear the word of God that is in you and he activates it. For instance, when you are broke, and by broke, you are really broke and you ain't got no money. And the Holy Spirit is in you, which I'm going to show you in a second through scriptures. He hovers around your body until he hears the word. He died, he became rich, so I will not be poor. Then he goes into action. The Holy Spirit is a creator. That means he creates something out of nothing. The Holy Spirit is the muscle of God. The Holy Spirit cannot be contended with. The Holy Spirit is the powerhouse of God. The Holy Spirit is the confronter of the Godhead and God the Son. The Holy Spirit raised up Jesus from the dead. The Holy Spirit was not only given to us in the book of Acts. All through Genesis, the Holy Spirit has been there. All through Revelation, the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit, as per the God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, is the only God that has now been given to us on earth to help us. See, the Holy Spirit is not a Holy Spirit. A Holy Spirit means there are many spirits. He's the Holy Spirit. He is the only one. So in 2023, you will be careful to call him the Holy Spirit. He is not A. When you say A, other gods might say a spirit, a spirit, a spirit. No, he is the Holy Spirit. The only God. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a person. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 3 verse 21 and 22. Because of time, I'm going to rush through the scriptures. But the Holy Spirit will bring you understanding. The Holy Spirit will make you understand what he wants you to hear. The Bible says one day when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized as he was praying. As he was praying, the heavens opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in a physical appearance. He didn't come as a spirit. He came in a form of a dove that is physical and he landed on top of Jesus. And the voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son, I take delight in you. What the scripture is saying is even though he is the spirit, invisible he can choose to appear to you physically and he demonstrated that 
in the book of Luke, Matthew, Mark, and John does not say he came in a physical form, but Luke says he came in the form of a dove. The last time a dove was mentioned was in the book of Genesis chapter 8. When Noah was in the boat, was in the ark for 40 days and 40 nights, there was a flood. And no one wanted to know when the flood was coming to an end. So he sent the dove out. The dove came, hovered and came back. Because there was no place for the dove to perch. He sent the dove out again. He hovered and he came back. But the third time, Genesis chapter 8, but the third time, the good news is the dove came back with an olive branch in its mouth. And I asked the Holy Spirit, what does this signify? He says the dove is a pure spirit. The dove is a set apart spirit. The dove is a holy spirit that came in bodily form. And when he came in bodily form, he carried good news. He carried good news. And the good news is that I brought an olive branch in my mouth. And the olive branch means peace. Peace. So the Holy Spirit carries peace. And Jesus is called what? The Prince of Peace. They work together. 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 His name is Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah means God, Yahweh. And Jesus will say, I'm giving you peace. The body that I have cleaned up via deliverance, the olive branch, is a symbol of peace. And Jesus is peace. And Jehovah Shalom is peace. So they are always working together. I don't have time, but in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, the Holy Spirit will say that, that I can grow wings and, 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 and get rest. And get rest. What does it mean? The Holy Spirit gives you rest. See, in the book of Genesis, Pastor John, they had gone through a flood. Maybe 2022, you were in a flood. But I'm telling you, the dove is coming. The Holy Spirit is coming. And when he came, he came to announce that the all things are gone. Behold, I've got good news. There is vegetation. There is peace. There is love. There is joy. There is healing. There is forgiveness. There is wealth. There is money. There is elevation. There is manifestation of the word of God. Because the Holy Spirit always carries a message for the believers. Yes, it's invisible, but he is. See, that's why you have to be careful. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, 2 says, be careful who you entertain. Because sometimes it might be the Holy Spirit. Be careful to be nice to people. Because the Spirit of the Lord can come in a form of a physical form. And you might not know who you are entertaining. So be careful, be careful. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13. John 14, 17, Jesus says something. You go to Ephesians, but John 14, 17. He says, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, when he comes, when he comes, Roman, can you come for a second? I need to demonstrate this. John 14, 17, please come here. And you don't want to miss this. Jesus said something. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will be in you and he'll be beside you. He will be in you and he will be beside you. Why is that important? After deliverance, you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Because seven wicked demons are coming back. 
But when they come and they realize that the Holy Spirit is in me, they leave you alone. But not only is he in you, he is beside you, along you. So in the morning, the Holy Spirit is with you. Not only is he with you, he is in you. So he's talking in you. It's called the inner voice. It's called intuitions. It's called the still small voice. And yet he's beside you. So you are not by yourself. You carry the Holy Spirit. So when poverty comes, you say, Holy Spirit, what do we do? He says, check the word. You speak the word, he goes into action. Thank you. Amen. Ephesians 1.13 says, In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, guess what? The Holy Spirit seals you. You know what a seal is? He is in you and he has sealed you. So the enemy cannot take you out. See, I want you to understand who the Holy Spirit is. So that when it's time to receive him, you are ready to just receive him. When something is sealed by the Holy Spirit, no human being can break it. No demon can break it. When something is sealed, only the rightful owner can unseal it. Only the rightful owner can unseal it. And this morning, according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, we are sealed in the Holy Ghost. Can I get a bottle of water that is sealed? You are sealed. You are sealed by the Holy Ghost. You are not sealed by man. See, this bottle has a seal. And it's easy to just open it. But you are the water. And the Holy Spirit is in the water with you. And he has sealed you. My eyes are open. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? What the Holy Spirit is saying is this. You are sealed. So what the enemy does is just shake you. He cannot uncover. He cannot unbreak. He cannot pour you out. He cannot access you. Because you are sealed. See yourself as the Holy Spirit and you in this bottle. When see, the Bible says. We are perplexed rocked, shaken on every side, every side, but we're not coming out. We're not coming out because there is a seal of the Holy Spirit on our lives. See what the devil does, he's a deceptor. So his job is to deceive you that you are not sealed. But the word of God says we are sealed. And See, the thing about the Holy Spirit is, regardless of your character, personality, when he comes, his personality overtakes it. It overrides who you are. So, Roman, you can say that I'm a quiet person. No problem. When the Holy Spirit is in you, and his power wants to be demonstrated to you. Your quietness is put aside. His agenda is put ahead of you. Romans 8.14 says, For as many that are led by the Holy Spirit. For as many that are led by the Holy Spirit. They are the sons of God. Now, this is why I, I, I break it down for you. The Holy Spirit does not lead you through your physical senses. He does not lead you through your physical senses. He leads you through your spirit. Because he is a spirit. 
And the way he does that is this. The Holy Spirit is a sensitive person. And you know, Brother Preston, when you're around sensitive people, you're careful what you say. When you're around sensitive people, you calculate your costs well because they are sensitive. The sensitivity of the Holy Spirit is this. He acts quickly. He acts what? Quickly. And his sensitivity works through your emotions. So what am I saying? When your emotions are up and down, up and down, check what you have done to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit and quench not the Spirit of the living God. So today you are happy. Tomorrow you are frustrated. Today you want up. Tomorrow you are down. Check it because see, the Holy Spirit is so sensitive. And because it works through your emotions, that sensitivity is what we see. So the Spirit of the living God desires that you don't quench it. See, the Bible says, quench not the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? See, the Holy Spirit must keep burning on the inside of you. Because he convicts you of your sin. But you quench the Holy Spirit by taking water and pouring over the Holy Spirit. So when he's warning you, you are not listening. When he's talking to you, you are not listening. I have three more minutes and I'll be out of your way. And you must catch this and catch it quick. The reason why you need the Holy Spirit... Is that Jesus came and he left. And he said, but I don't want you to be left at. I don't want you to be left without a helper. Only the unwise person will say no to help. Only someone that is not wise will say I don't need help. But see, the helper, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says when he comes... He comes to number one, fill the body that the enemy have left. And as I demonstrated to you, when your body is empty and it's not full with the word of God and it's not full with the spirit of the living God, the enemy brings seven strong demons. But when they come, and they begin to see the power of the Holy Ghost in you and they begin to see the word of God in you the Bible says they come in one direction but in several ways they flee they begin to run because they understand that the spirit of the living God is in the inside of you child of God you need the Holy Spirit today and it's a gift. I've been walking with the Holy Spirit for many, many years. Sometimes he speaks very silently. And sometimes he's wild. Stop this. Sometimes he loves you so much. You're sitting there reading the word and you're crying and you don't know why. It's called the overwhelming presence of God. Sometimes you get to a crossroads in life and he shows up as the helper. Sometimes a loved one suddenly dies and you're so confused and you're grieving and he says, I'm your comforter. This morning, one of the main evidence of having the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 4 that says, see, when you speak in unknown tongues, I want you to forget all the jargons that the world tells you on Google. The Bible that we've come to believe says, you speak to God. You speak to God directly. But what you're telling God, you don't understand it. 
but the spirit of God on the inside of you it makes an intercession for you. It begins to say, my father, my father, your daughter needs a way out. My father, my father, come through for this one. We don't know what we're saying when we say, Kabrasa, Katoriyama, Saita, Iriyama, Sekepe, unless he has given you the gift of interpreting what you are saying. But if you don't carry that gift yet, guess what? You can ask him. You can ask him. And the Bible says he will freely give it to you. And if you don't desire it, rest assured, the Spirit make intercession for you. So I end with this. You're going to request it this morning when I invite Pastor George. You do not want to live here without having the Holy Spirit. Don't cheat yourself this morning. You have to release your tongue to the Spirit of the Lord. You have to release your tongue to Him. Have you thought about it? How come when we become born again Christians and the Holy Spirit moves on, our tongue is the first thing that He changes. Because what you say matters. He's sensitive. You speak His word. He goes into action. Your prayer is going to say, Lord... I release my tongue. I release my spirit. And I want you to remember you're dealing with God. You're dealing with God, the Holy Spirit. It's not a wind. He's the God, the Holy Spirit. Shall we invite Pastor George, please? What a blessing. What a blessing. Will you clap on to Jesus? Please also help me welcome Dr. Kazumba. Please, can you clap? And uh, his lovely wife, Glory. What a blessing. You are, you are in for a treat today. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is with them. A uh, very good brother of mine. You know, you see him. He was a professional soccer player. <laughs> he used to play for Zambia. What a blessing. We, so today we're going to enjoy both the word and soccer. What a blessing. Clap unto Jesus. Thank you so much, Pastor Harry. The person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, today everyone here that desire to pray with the baptism of the Holy Spirit will receive it. Amen. Everyone. Everyone. How many? How many? So, few minutes that I have. Holy Ghost. I'm going to start with the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8. We are promised that you shall receive what? Power. Talk to me. You shall receive what? Power. And so the whole purpose today is that we waited on God. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 40 verse 31. That we will wait on the Lord that we shall do what? We will renew our strength and we receive that power for 2023 and beyond. Glory to God. Are you ready? 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 And so, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, put it up on my screen there. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, I'm going to use a few scriptures to just set you up so that when we release you to pray, you will receive it because it's a gift. Amen. Watch this. It says, but you shall receive what? Talk to me. You shall receive what? Power. The way you are saying power, I don't feel the power. You shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, then you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But there is something going on in Acts chapter 2 verse 14. These were the apostles that Jesus had his spirit himself 
mentored and, and anointed. But the Bible speaking tells us that when Jesus was living, the apostles and the disciples he had mentored were persecuted and they began to move all around. Some of them went back to fishing. Listen to me and hear the word of the Lord. Some of them almost quit serving God. We know Peter had already denied his master and he's feeling so bad. And so now we know in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, when they were all in one accord, the Bible says that because some of them had left Jesus, one of the people who were commanded to be the mouthpiece of the New Testament church was sitting down doing nothing because he thought he didn't qualify to carry the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says in this verse here, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice. Why? This was the man that was now feeling all bummed out. He felt like he was a sinner. He felt disappointed because he denied his master. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, he began to what? Stand up. And so now the scripture is saying what caused him to be the mouthpiece of the New Testament church was because something came upon him. I said something did what? Came upon him. And when that something came, it quickened all the disciples that had quit, that had given up, that didn't want to serve God anymore. And from that day, boldness to witness. Remember, Acts chapter 1, 8, you shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Ghost had come upon you and you shall be witnesses of me. Now, because they had not received it yet, in Acts chapter 2, the 14, the evidence of that power had come upon them. And Peter, here was him, you know, crying, Lord, I denied you. How can I save you? How can I work for you? How can I be a witness of you? How can I bring the good news to people? And the Bible says that I'm pretty sure on the, in, the, in, the, in the upper room, when everyone was receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he felt like, I can't receive it. I denied Jesus. I denied him. I'm not good enough for him. Oh, no, no. They can pray in tongues, but not me. Look at my background. Look at my life. Look at what I've been through. Look at what happened to me. But the Bible says that whilst he's sitting there, watch this, he's sitting there complaining, Jesus can't use me. Things can happen. No, I don't know how to pray in tongues. I'm a sinner. The Bible says that there's something that was sitting on all the 11, but also sat on him. And when that something sat on him, the Bible says that he stood up. And that day, out of his mouth, 3,000, a gate was opened. 3,000 people gave themselves to Jesus. Proving Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that what the promise Jesus gave was sure. And now he says that you and I, if we believe and we come to him, one of the things he will give it to us as his children, that even us being wicked people can give bread to our children. How much more the Father give us the Holy Ghost? How, somebody say, how much more? It says that now, do you know the most universal food in the world is bread? Every culture in the world eat bread. That is why Jesus is the bread of He said, now he compares the Holy Ghost to bread. He says, how much more your heavenly father not give you the Holy Ghost? And so listen to me. Why do you need the Holy Ghost? Number one, it quickens your prayer life. You see, by yourself, you can pray for two minutes. Lord, I thank you for my car. I thank you for my child. And I thank you for my job. And, uh, hey, hey. and I thank you, oh, my shoes, hey, God. And I thank you for, you know, John and, you know, even my boss's boss, you know, I thank you. And then you are out of words. You're finished. You're finished. And yet there is a mandate, Sister Junior, on our life that could you not tarry for one hour? 
And so the expectation is that when you stand, you should be able to consume yourself and at least release yourself in prayer for at least what? One hour. But how do you remember your speaker? You see, it is on that premise the Bible speaks us that we do not know what to pray for. But when the Spirit come upon us, He will show us how to pray. So maybe right now, as I'm about to release you to receive that gift, there is because of you someone that is pregnant that is about to have miscarriage. When you wake up in the night, you do not know what to pray for. Bakadima rakateya. Zene mataba katone. Zakote. Now, all of a sudden, prayer is released to stop takeaba, to stop uh, a miscarriage. And you will never know about it. Because you become a vessel of prayer. Number two, the boldness to witness Jesus comes upon you. Do you know naturally Christians are timid until the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Ghost. Yes. When the Holy Ghost come upon you and on you, you know my mom will tell you naturally I don't talk. As a matter of fact, ask my wife. If I don't stay here, you won't see me. Naturally, after I live here, I'm a very quiet person. But when this thing enters me, there are dimensions. Sometimes one of them, it enters me. I I see the lion. Literally, I have. Now, here is a man that is naturally quiet. But there are moments where a lion enters me. Hey, someone say, Holy Ghost. So, so you see, that is why the enemy, remember the devil is a deceiver. Anything good that God gave, he wants to deceptively mess it up. Marriage, the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You see, the things that will cause the believers to be advanced, the enemy deceptively twists it. Now, the question one is asking is, how will I know it's from God? Because you are a child of God. You you are not a child of the devil. So, if you are a child of God, why will you speak a, a language of the devil? So, so, what comes out of you is from God. Because the enemy is afraid. If you begin to speak it, you will torment his kingdom. Ah, I see God raising tormentors. God is raising tormentors. Hey, say hey. Kadali makadiasa. In the moment, everyone that desires is going to receive. So, what will stop you from receiving unforgiveness? Sister Alex taught to us today. If I regard iniquities in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And remember, the Holy Ghost is a person. So remember, by your new birth experience, the person of the Holy Ghost comes upon you and inside you. So because remember, if you ask Jesus, Jesus is a team. God God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So when you say, Jesus, come into my heart, all the three. So when the team enters you, now the three functions differently. But they are one. And so, one of the proof of the person of the Holy Ghost is the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's all. It's an evidence. It's an evidence. It's an evidence. It's an evidence. evidence. The person is there. The evidence must be activated. But you have to ask him. Say, Holy Ghost, stir me up. Give me the gift of speaking in tongues. And right there, he says, I'm here already. What do you want? Open up your mouth and speak it. Now, do you know the Holy Ghost himself doesn't speak tongues? It is humans that speak tongues. (laughs) Yes. The Holy Ghost, he's the person. That is who he is. His expression is what you want to. 
So you express him through your heavenly language. Oh, watch this. I want to give you something. I want to give you something. Are you ready? Are you ready to pray? Now, pastor, how about those of us that pray in the Holy Ghost already, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost already? There are dimensions. There are dimensions. You can, they say that, though I speak with tongues of angels, there are times where you enter a certain dimension where you begin to engage the angelic realm. There are times where you begin to enter certain dimension, where you begin to engage spiritual warfare. There are times where you begin to enter certain dimension, where you begin to engage in spiritual worship, songs and psalms. And then intercession, and then in prayer. So there are dimensions. So if you have it already, you can ask God, change my tongues, take me to another level. If you don't have it, you just receive it. You just receive it. So the thing is, you have to open up your mouth and speak it because God will not speak it for you. He will stir you up, but you have to speak it. Right? You have to speak it. Are you ready? Are you ready? I, I don't have time for you too long, too much time. I have only five minutes and everyone will receive it. Amen. Because it's a desire. If you don't desire, we're not going to force ourselves on you. I receive it, receive it. No, no, we don't do that here. It's a desire. It's a gift. Right now, if I want to give you a gift. If I want to give you a gift. Yes. So right now, if he put the hand on his back, can he receive the gift? He's there. He's smiling, but he will never have the gift. And what God has done is that he has raised his hand with the baptism of the Holy Ghost for his church so that we can operate in power. And Christians are like this. And they are weak. They are struggling. They are going through torture. The enemy is tormenting them and they are not receiving. But it says you shall receive. You shall what? You shall receive. So the, 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 the focus is on the receiver, not the giver. The giver has released it already. But you shall receive. Are you ready to receive? Let me give you one scripture and then we will go. Are you ready? Isaiah 28 verse 11. How do you speak it? Isaiah 28 11. This is where it is. Are you ready? Are you, do you see it? Now, how do you speak in tongues? Brother Preston, that is right there. For with a stammering lips, how do you stammer? Ba, ma, ma. You want to say go, 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 go. Do you see it? My goodness. How do you stammer? Your words become twisted. So with stammering lips and with another tongue, he will speak to this people. With stammering lips and with another tongue, you will speak. So when you are speaking with stammering tongue and you want to say go, you say go, 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 go. Because you want to say the words, but it seems like the words are not complete. But the words are coming out. That is a stammering lips. And so do you see how the devil has deceived believers? The person is inside. You have to open your mouth. But this is the wickedness of the devil. Last statement. Usually when it is time for people to speak with new tongues, the enemy holds their tongue. People, sometimes their mouth becomes as if someone is holding it. Oh yes, I've seen many. I've seen many. I've seen many. Can you stand on your feet? Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, the first thing we want to do is those of us that speaks it already. Now, hear this. Those of you that are not speaking the, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we are going to speak. Now, the gift is ready. Uh, many of you, we will not have to lay hands on you. You are going to receive it. Amen. Amen. When I release you to pray, you just open up your mouth and you begin to pray. And the voice of the Spirit will stir you up. And you will begin to now release the word of God. Now and after that, 
Look at what will happen. Look at the benefit of it. I feel like, let me give you the benefit. We will get back to Isaiah 28, 11, but let's go to Jude 1, 20 first. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. This is what it happens to you. It says that by you, my beloved, what do you do? Building yourself up in your most holy faith. Do what? Praying in the... Woo! By you, my beloved, building yourself up. Praying in the Holy Spirit. This is just one of the blessings. And so when you wake up and you are so tired and you don't want to pray, let and then strength begins to rise strength begins to rise and all of a sudden you don't know what to do fire begins to run out of your bones are you ready? are you ready? let me have two intercessors are you ready? Are you ready? Lift your right hand. Now, is there anyone here that have not received the evidence of praying in the spirit? You are here and you have not prayed in the Holy Ghost before, but you desire because we are not going to take long. You desire. You desire. I'm not I don't want people that want experimentation. No, 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 no. We are not here. We want people that are hungry online or in-house if that is you very quickly come to the altar only those that have never prayed in the holy ghost before never before before oh my god today is your good day somebody clap today is your good day today is your day today is your day hallelujah now hear this i cannot pray for you in other, in other words i'm going to pray for you and the grace will come upon you. But you have to open up your mouth and pray. Put the Isaiah um, the 28, 11. You have to open up your mouth and pray. Now, church, are you ready? You are going to receive another level. Another level. Just three minutes. Are you ready? Lift your right hand and say, In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Anything that will block me from receiving any sin, any iniquity, Lord, I repent. I plead the blood. Cleanse my vessel. You are holy so you cannot stay in unholy vessel wash me with the blood cleanse me now those of you that are here you are to pray that prayer because until your vessel is cleansed the holy ghost cannot come amen are you ready so say holy spirit say jesus wash me Say it. Those of you, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Those of you here, say it. Say, Jesus, wash me. Cleanse me. Forgive me. In the name of Jesus. From today, my vessel is clean. I'm a recipient of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. Amen. Now, as a church, we are going to pray in the spirit. Just three minutes. Time me for three minutes. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Say, my father, I receive fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. I receive fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Let the pelekata mantelemesu ataya Likata balakatea Lakata la badaka Netele me kotena Ateme me kepana Lakata la badaka tea Matole le dina balakata Libra tele me suata Leke de me leketa Leto lo mosi balakata 
Jesus. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. My God. My God. Oh, the way you are clapping, you can do better. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Come on, keep clapping. Give honor to the Spirit. Give honor to Jesus. Hallelujah! That's it. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Listen. 
Let's take two minutes. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Kadibili hataya. Manto pelizuka la bataniha. Eve kots kipete ni manakando. Letrotonti limitaya. Aveskano menekata. Varunte kabalo tene mahano. Veskone manake paruta heza. Eza leko tene manta. Isko beleke tene manaha. Hey. Spirit of the Lord taught the power of repentance. Please, after this session, after when you go home, listen to that. Go and listen to this whole session. It was something else. And we all repented before our God. And then Sister Alex brought us a word. The power of inner healing and forgiveness. Not only did we God forgive us, but we forgive ourselves. Wow. We forgive ourselves because the most dangerous person to not forgive is ourselves. So we forgive ourselves. So if you were not here, just lift your hand and say, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Say it again, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Yes. You can forgive everyone, but if you don't forgive yourself, you're in trouble. So we forgive not only others, but we forgive ourselves. And then we went into the power of deliverance and breakthrough. And the Lord delivered us. The chains were broken. Every chain. So if you were not here, say with me, every chain. Because we need to bring you along. We don't want you to, when we are receiving, you cannot say every chain. Every chain. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Break. Break. Hey. Demons are shivering. You are free now. By the power of the blood. Thank you. By the power of the blood. In the name of Jesus. And then Pastor Harry took us to the person of the Holy Spirit. And then the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So if you realize what God is doing is dealing with our spirit soul in every area of our life. Amen. Now we have the next one. We have Elder Ken. But today he's not putting on the elder. If the elder is there. Today he's putting on the medical doctor. And he's going to teach us how we can live a healthy life in 2023. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. So I want you to help me. Today he's not the, he's elder, but he's elder medical doctor Ken Freeman. Let's welcome elder Ken. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor George. Glory to God. Good morning, church. Hey, I'm talking to you. Okay, good morning, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I wish everyone would answer me like Preston is. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. 
Now, I only have a few minutes to talk to you about how to position yourself in 2023 to be healthy. Amen. I don't have to tell you, but just in case you forgot, God wants you healthy. Amen. God wants you healthy. Say with me, God wants me healthy. And it's not for God's sake. It's for your sake. It's for your sake. And so I'm hoping that within the next 15 minutes or so that I can encourage you or convince you to do a couple of things that by the time 2023 is finished, that you and I will be healthier. Do you think that is a proposition that you can do? Amen. Glory to God. Who wants to be healthy? Show me a hand. Who wants to be healthy? That's just some of you. Thank you very much. So, you want to be healthy. In fact, you know, not only God are three in one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You and I are also three in one. Okay? We are little gods. We have the same makeup. So you are spirit, soul, and body. And if you've been paying attention, I know a spirit man is receiving food today. I know the soul man is also receiving food today. And the physical man, the body, is also here to receive food. We're not going to serve food here. But I'm going to tell you <laughs> things that you need to do so you can be healthy. I am sure that these are things you already know. I'm just reminding you. That's a mandate I've been given. I'm going to make it as simple as possible. For some of you, there's stuff you're already doing. I want to encourage you to keep doing them and think about the next level that you can go to. I want to be healthy. I don't know about you. You know, I had the privilege of, I worked most of the night last night, and there were people, you know, I feel as though the Lord is rebuking me a little bit because I'm saying, I don't know how I'm going to survive today, you know, because it's so long, maybe I should just take a break. And, you know, how, when, what time did we start, Pastor George? 8 o'clock. And we are scheduled to finish at around 2. So 8 and 4 to have 2. There have been people waiting in the emergency room for more than 6 hours, the time that you spend in church. Wow. You know why they're waiting? To be healthy. Wow. So this is an investment in your health. Amen. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Amen. You can clap unto God. Because God has given you the opportunity to come into his house. And you know what? At the end of that wait, some of them were given bad news. Some of them were given stuff. Some of them were saying, okay, I don't know what's going on. But thank God that God is a God of good news. God is a God of good news. That's why we're here today to receive good news. Glory to God. I want to remind you what health really is. So when we think about health, we think about just the body. You know, the World Health Organization has a definition for health. The WHO said, and I'm going to read, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, that health is a state of complete, complete physical, mental, social, I'm putting in this part, spiritual well-being. It's not just the absence of a disease. Glory to God. So for the young people here, if you're saying, I don't need to pay attention to what Elder Ken is saying because I'm healthy. I don't have any disease. You need to listen still because health is not just about being free from disease. It's about maintaining what you already have. And I like to look at it like a big pie. For those of you who like pie, I'm talking about a healthy pie. Okay? You know, a pie, has, if you cut it up, there's several slices. I don't know about you, um, but I'm learning later as I, go, as I grow older that I should not settle for one slice of the pie. Those days are over. Same thing when I'm celebrating, I'm saying, I'm not going to just celebrate my birthday for one day. Who says I have to do it for one day? Whole week, okay? So why should I settle for one part of the pie? You know God wants you to have the whole pie? God wants you to have the whole thing. God wants you to be healthy spiritually. That's what you're doing today. God wants you to be healthy financially. God wants you to be healthy mentally, and God wants you to be healthy physically. That is the plan of God. In fact, the Bible tells us, if we can put up 3 John verse 2. 
beloved, Faith International Church. I wish above all things. Put your name in there. Kenneth. Put your name in there. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. That's what the word of God says. So God wants you healthy and I hope I don't have to say anything else to convince you that you should be healthy in the name of Jesus. So health equals to wholeness. Equals to the whole pie and not just a slice. Today I just want to talk about the physical part. I'm sure you've been receiving spiritual health um, and a soul health, mind, will, emotional health. But that's a different topic altogether. So why should we be healthy? Why should you be healthy? We already said that God wants you healthy, 3 John 2. And there are many, many other verses in the Bible that talks about the fact that God wants you to be healthy. And for those of you familiar with the Bible, there are verses that say that, you know, God sends his word and he heals your disease. In Deuteronomy 28, God said that he's going to bring all these blessings upon you. Many of the blessings were physical healing, blessings. And that's what God wants. The ultimate, when we read the book of Revelation, the Bible talks about one day will come. One day will come when I'll be out of a job. <laughs> the Bible says that one day with God in heaven, there'll be no more sickness. No more crying, no more pain, no more dying. Glory to God, I can't wait for that day. Glory to God. And for some of you, you know, there's some people who suffer every day. And so they wait patiently for that time to come when the word of God will be fulfilled. But until that time, God has given you and I a mandate. We have to take care of ourselves. You know, is it up to God only for us to be healthy? You can answer. It's okay, I talk to myself sometimes. Is it up to God alone for you to be healthy? Glory to God. Glory. Exactly. Exactly. So you want to be healthy. Who wants to be sick? Who wants to be sick? I don't. Glory to God. You know, being healthy is not only for God. But I say to people, we talk about serving God and doing all the things God wants us to do, but we don't take time to take care of our body. Let me ask you the question. How good are you to the kingdom? How good are you or beneficial are you to this house if you're sick every day? How are you going to tell others about Jesus if you're not able to get up and walk and tell them? How are you going to do the work of God if you're in bed all the time? You see, being healthy is not just for you. It's also for others. I am healthy, yes, for the kingdom of God, for my own sake, and for the sake of my family. And I say to people, I say to the men a couple of months ago, how good are you to your family if you're sick? How beneficial are you to your family if you're not able to work because you're sick? No. Being healthy is for the kingdom, it's for you, it's for your family, it's for your children. Everyone benefits when you're healthy. So it's easy. Just let's be healthy. And that's what we want to talk about. Also, Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love your? Love your neighbor as you love your? It is not selfish to love yourself and take care of yourself. For how can I help you if I'm not able to help me? Glory to God. So taking care of yourself is an act of love. Good health is a treasure we need to cherish more. And you don't know it until you don't have it. Glory to God. You know, I look over the congregation and I see many expectant, smiling faces. I can see that. Turn to the person next to you and give them a smile. Glory to God. And many, many of you, all of you, you look great. You look great. Tell the person next to you, you look great. Tell the other person you look great. Come on. You guys over here too. So I say, to, I say to my clients all the time, okay, you look great. But here's the golden question. Do you feel as good as you look? Do you feel as good as you look? 
So sometimes we go around, of course, we got to put on a good face. And, you know, as the Bible says, you know, comb your hair, wash your face and all that. But you don't only want to look good. I want to feel good. Amen? Don't just look good, feel good. That's what the ultimate is. So we have established what health is. The fact that God wants us healthy. Your family wants us healthy. The church wants you healthy. The city wants you healthy. The country wants you healthy. For that is God's will for you. The question is, is it up to God alone? No. You and I have a part to play. You and I have a part to play. You and I have a part to play. So how do we get healthy? A couple quick things. A couple quick things. How do you get healthy? First of all, you depend on God. You see, God has made all the provisions necessary for you to be healthy. Of course, we know God wants you healthy, but the devil wants you sick. God wants you healthy, but the devil wants to take you out. So we know that almost all sicknesses originated from the pit of hell. In the Garden of Eden, I am absolutely sure the Bible tells us that Adam and Eve were made in the image and likeness of God, and God was not sick. And then sin came, and then sickness came. So sickness is not really of God at all. Of course, you can argue that God sent sickness on people, but that's a different discussion. The fact is God wants you healthy, and the devil wants you sick. That's the devil's plan. So God has given you all the tools that you need to be healthy. Sometimes we are praying to God to make us healthy, but we are not doing the things that we ought to do. We are praying that God will fix this and fix that and fix that, but we are not doing our part. And it's not going to work. It's not going to work. We depend on God to do everything. Now, let me ask you this. When you go home after church, or let's say tomorrow at lunchtime, God gives you the food. You have it in front of you. Are you going to sit and pray and say, Lord, come Thank you. You do your part. You got to eat the food. You got to drink the drink. You got to get up out of the bed. You got to get up from the couch. You got to go to the doctor. You got to go to the gym. You have to do your part. We have to do our part. Let's not depend on God to do stuff that God has given us the responsibility to do. We are waiting on God, but God is waiting on us. Not only in the spirit, I'm talking about in the physical. In the name of Jesus, say amen. amen. Because that is the truth. It is our responsibility to take good care of ourselves. As well as take good care of others. Glory to God. Now, things sick people can do to be healthy. You know, I know that life is not perfect. And some of us suffer from medical conditions. But there are certain things that you can do to keep your health. And especially... The young people who say that, hey, I'm healthy. I don't need to do anything. But for those who might be suffering sickness, you know, sickness is not always the result of bad habits or inadequate self-care. It doesn't mean because somebody's sick, they're doing something bad. Let me make that clear, okay? If someone is sick, you need to seek medical help and follow sound advice. It is not unspiritual to seek medical attention. It is not unspiritual to go to your doctor. Because if somebody falls on the floor out of the building, what are you going to do? You're going to call 911. Is that unspiritual? No. So your doctor has been giving you medical advice. Your medical professional will be giving you medical advice. Follow it. Do it. Glory to God. Seek the Lord for healing, of course. Because there's some sicknesses we can't take care of. Only God can. And so we seek the Lord in those situations. And then practice good habits. Practice good habits. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the next few minutes that I have. Practice good habits. You know what I'm talking about. Eat right. Exercise right. Sleep right. If there's other things you have to do, do it. Okay? Do it in the name of Jesus. Health could be defined as preventative and curative. You know, 
I tell young people, don't wait until you get old like I am. I'm not old, by the way, but older as I am. So start taking care of yourself. It is harder to do it when you're older. You know, I have some patients that I see, and I said, look, you need to do this now. Don't wait until you get this age, because it becomes very, very difficult. So young people, listen up. Take care of yourself. Glory to God. Practical steps for self-care. First of all, know yourself. Know yourself. Know yourself. What do I mean? You should know what your weight is. Hmm? What your weight is. Go on the scale and check it out. Two, know what your blood pressure is. Glory to God. Go to your doctor. Know what your blood sugar is. Glory to God. Know what is normal for you. Secondly, get regular medical exam. Where was the last time you saw the doctor? Or your healthcare professional? Or your dentist? When was the last time? Only you can answer that question. You know, we take better care of our cars than we do our bodies. Anyone, if you own a car, show me a hand. You own a car, a vehicle? Do you drive it all year without changing the oil? Exactly. Why should you not take care of this body? Go see the mechanic. Go see the doctor. Take care of your body. If you're on medical treatment, keep taking it until you don't need it anymore. I know sometimes God gives you faith and says, look, stop taking this. Trust me for that. But unless God told, tells you that, don't stop taking your medication. It's called reckless faith. Do what you have to do, and your time will come when you won't need to take it anymore. By God's grace. Do some form of physical activity. Even if it's a brisk walk. A couple times a week. It could be in your house. You can go up and down the stairs. You can go around the block. You don't have to go to the gym to do some physical activity. Get enough sleep. Young people, get enough sleep. Teenagers, youth, get enough sleep. Leave the iPad, the iPhone, the computer alone. Do not stay up at 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. It is not healthy for you, and you already know it. You know, when you don't have enough sleep, it affects a lot of other stuff. Get enough sleep. Eat healthy. Eat healthy. And that's a different topic by itself. Eat quality in quantity and quality. Eat healthy in quantity and quality. And we can talk about it later. Fresh old foods, home cooked foods, daily veggies, fruits, all the stuff you already know. Save your money. Amen? Don't make McDonald's rich. Okay? Take care of yourself. No, this is stuff that you already know. And if I can conclude, I know I'm over by a minute or two. This is what I want you to do. Maybe later on you can ask me for a copy. I'll give you a copy. Here's a challenge for you. Since we're out of time. I have, it's up on the screen right now. This is my challenge. You can take a photograph. Health checklist for Faith International. For you. Know your health status. Know your weight. Is it getting better or worse or the same? Know your blood pressure. Check it out. Is it getting better or worse or the same? Know your blood sugar. Is it getting worse, better or worse or the same? Get a medical checkup. Can I challenge you? Before the end of this month, book an appointment and see a doctor or see a dentist. Go and take a look. Call them. If you're a spouse and your husband doesn't want to go, you call the doctor and book an appointment for him. The other way around. Our job is to encourage each other and push each other. Do some form of physical activity. We talked about eat healthy. Get enough sleep. See God for these things. We can take better care of ourselves. We can. But you have to start. Can I challenge you? Start doing that now. Not next week. Now. When you go home, get a paper. Write it down. Say, this is my health goal for this year. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Write it down. Because the truth is, God wants you healthy. And you want to be healthy. Let's stop making excuses and do what we have to do. I think that's good advice. In the name of Jesus. That God be the glory. Great things he's done. Glory to God. Uh, come on, clap unto Jesus. Clap unto Jesus. We are about to worship the Lord, but thank you so much, Elder Ken. What a blessing. What a blessing. Come, musicians, you can come.
We are about to worship the Lord, but um, I just wanted to thank God for this amazing wisdom. The Bible says that wisdom is profitable unto all men. We will not wait until it's too late. We can do something about it right now. Why do we take care of our cars more than we take care of our bodies? It will not happen anymore. We will take care of ourselves. Do you know the anointing needs a healthy body? Look at the way I jump on this stage. <laughs> you know? I wake up and I jump so much on this stage. So please, the, the medical doctor has, that's why I didn't teach it. We brought an authority to tell us. And we are obedient. Amen. Don't be so spiritual that you are not wise. Most Christians are so spiritual and it is not wise. But as for me and my house, as for Faith International, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, every area we will be poor. And I believe already you are feeling like, Lord, if I go home right now, I feel like something has happened to me already. Hallelujah. But no, we have more for you. This is what waiting is about. This is what waiting is about. We spend time in his presence. And God feeds us from every side. Are you happy you are here? Amen. Your amen is not saying it. Are you happy you are here? Amen. We are about to worship and praise the Lord. We are about to worship. So I want you to stand on your feet as we worship and dance and praise and do what the music team is leading us to. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord. Ooh, yeah. Oh 
você
And this is what the songwriter said. He said, there is a ladder in the spirit. And the protocol to come on that ladder, to come face to face with God, is to worship and praise us. And sometimes we get before him. And we say, Lord, what should we call you? He said, call me Jah. Sometimes we get before him and say, Lord, what should we call you? For Moses, he said, I am that I am. He said, tell Pharaoh, I am that I am. He's your healer, your provider, your protector, the revelator, the creator, the sustainer, your everything. We lack nothing because God is our shepherd. God is our shepherd. And like sheep, he leads us beside still waters. And my favorite in that is, he set a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He set a table before us in the presence of our accusers. And then he's not done. He anoints our head with oil. We are oiled up. Our head is anointed by God. And then our cup runs over. We live in the overflow. That's good news. We live in the overflow. We are blessed to be a blessing. And then the revelation that he gave us this year. Goodness and mercy shall follow us. Goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. All the days of our lives. So we have no want. Goodness shall goodness. Mercy shall follow us. We are not by ourselves. Tell the devil to watch out. How about you sit on the head of your enemies? Sit on them. Take a seat. Sit on the head of your enemies. Sit well. I'm going to invite the ushers to please help us enter a time of worship as we give on to Jehovah God. If you need an envelope, simply raise your hands. We're going to do it so quickly because the next session... I've been waiting for and the Lord has been preparing us if you need an envelope simply raise your hands and you will be served there are multiple ways you can partner with us here at Faith International Church our mission and our vision is simple knowing Jesus and making him known we're not trying to complicate things we just want to do the desire of the Lord and obey Jesus we are a full gospel, whole Bible-believing church. And we do believe in the tithing and the offerings. We do believe in it. Because it's the Lord that commanded it. That if we obey him, then he will open up the windows of heaven. And the truth is, we've been enjoying heaven on earth already in this place. We are simply manifesting what the word of God says. And as today we've all repented, as St. Nicola led us, please make it right with God in the area of your finances. Be faithful. And the scripture said, put God to test and watch him come through for you. If he can cause ravens, a bird, to feed his prophets, then surely God can take care of you. I'm challenging you to give cheerfully when the offering time and it's time for you to drop that tithe and that offering. Do it cheerfully knowing that God is partnering with you in your finances. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come in obedience with your word. That is time to give unto you. Your word says you are the one that gives seeds for the sower. 
and bread for the eater. Your word also says one man gives freely and goes into prosperity. Another man withholds and they go into poverty. Father, we come into agreement with your word that as we release our seeds in this tiring service that is fallen on good grounds, a ground that will be able to take the gospel across the globe, that we will feed our community, that we will be there for each other, that your kingdom will be built. And Lord, you gave us a covenant that you open up the windows of heaven. You will rebuke the devourer of our finances. And all nations will call us blessed. So we come into agreement with this word that it is so. As we release in faith, we expect a 60-fold, a hundred-fold, and a cup running over fold for our generations and our generations to come. If you're in agreement, can you say a loud and resounding amen as the ushers serve you? Praise God. Hello, Faith. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Here are some ways to give or partnership with us. For in person, visit the church at 1967 Leslie Street, North York, Ontario, M3B 2M3, Tuesdays to Friday, 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Mail your seed and donations at 1967 Leslie Street, North York, Ontario, M3B 2M3. Please write your full name. For online, give on our website at faithinternational.ca. Tap and click on the Give button and fill in the forms with your payment information and submit. For e-transfer, give at faithinternational.ca. Please include your full name and email for received tax purposes. Text to give. Text give to 289 216-4715 and enter the amount. All of heaven rose your name Sing louder Thank you, Lord. Let this place erupt with praise Can you hear it? The sound of I want Lauren to sing it. Just Lauren. Go ahead. Break our walls down. Sense an anointing this morning. Spirit, break out. That's right. Let heaven come down.
Yes, Lord. Break all down. Yes, Lord. Ready to hear. Spirit, break out. My God. Let heaven come down. King Jesus, one more time. King Jesus, you're the name we're lifting high. You're your spirit be prepared to receive the word of the Lord. In a minute we're going to re invite the servant of the Lord for you. To bring the word of the Lord. I want you to prepare your heart. All we want is the kingdom of our God. Everything. Everything. Shaking up the earth and sky. Revival. We yes, want to see a kingdom here. Yes, if you are clapping, clap to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Oh, Lord. My God. The atmosphere is... God's glory is here. This is how you wait on the Lord as he renews your strength. And then you mount up with wings like eagles and you run and you're not weary. I want to prophesy on someone after this service today, you are rising up with the strength of the Lord for 2023. You would take the year 2023 by the horn and subdue it in the name of Jesus. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon you mightily to outrun. Glory to God. Well, if you're thankful to God, clap unto Jesus. And if and if you're here and also super excited, clap onto the Holy Spirit. And if you're truly glad that you are here, why don't you shout to the Father? Hallelujah. Glory. Well, we are in for another treat. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for the servant of the Lord in the house of the Lord today. He came with his whole family. I call him, he has a clan. He has a whole tribe <laughs> following him. And uh, he's my covenant brother. Um, I love his spirit because he carries the kingdom heart. Um, he travels around. If you travel more than Dr. Kazumba, I think we need to inoculate you or something. He's a traveling evangelist. But um, he and his wife, God has blessed so much. Do you know, as humble as he is, it's his TV station. They, God used them to found Kingdom Network. That goes around to millions of people around the world. Yes. 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 Millions of people. And now it's hosted by the same platform with which TVN is hosted on is the same platform with KITV. So, what a blessing. And yet, he's so humble. They are so humble. They're so chill. And uh, yet, the word of the Lord is with them. And um, when you see people that God has lifted, but all they want to do is just kingdom, it's a blessing. And God has, God is good to us today. Oh, yes. You see the picture, right? And guess what? He never goes anywhere without his lovely wife, right? They're like, <laughs> they, they're always together, and I love it. You know, what made us became very close was because I go everywhere with my wife. 
and he goes everywhere with his wife. So I'm like, this is a good brother. He's, <laughs> you know. So, you know, Dr. Kasimba Charles was born in the Copper Belt of the province of Zambia. And uh, now, this is awesome. He's a fourth son among the ten children. And he's a former professional soccer player. And uh, he surrendered his life to Jesus Christ after encountering him in 1999. And he immediately began desiring more of God. And his desire is to just serve the Lord, you know. And went through the Bible schools and all those many, many degrees and so many of them. And, um, you know, he been ministering around the world. And he and his wife, um, Glory, what an a, a awesome name. They are the founders of the Kingdom Inside TV or KITV, and um, they broadcast all across the world with, in 61 countries. Can you imagine? 61 nations, and God uses him to be a blessing. Um, what a blessing. Today, I'm excited to bring my brother, whom I love so much, and you're going to hear the teachings of the Lord. Very sound man of God, uh, integral, loves the Lord and loves Jesus and loves the kingdom. And so, Faith, let's stand up on our feet and welcome Dr. Kazumba and his lovely wife, Glory. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory. We don't take nothing for granted. From the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you for this church. It's powerful. Many churches are dead. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come into your house. Thank you for those who labor in the kingdom so, so that we can come and drink from the fountain of life. We thank you for the word of God that was going to preach today. May I receive it. Open my ear to hear. Open my heart to receive. Cause your word to bring life unto me, oh God. Let your word change me from the inside out, God. And I will never be the same. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, the Spirit of living God. You are that life. You are that life. You are that life that we are crying for. You are that life that changes us. Change your people today. Bring our awakening in our soul today. Bring our awakening, stirring up our spirit to receive from you today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We don't take you for granted in the name of Jesus. Speak through your servant and we are listening. And we are going to do accordingly, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. What an honor and a privilege to be here. My brother, Pastor George, and uh, Pastor Ariad. Uh, we've connected at a deeper level. You may have not seen me before here. I am not a guest, and I will not preach to you as a guest. I am part of the family, so I'm not a guest that you see out there. I'm here as a family and as uh, one of uh, the members here. So I will. that means I will stay within time, 
and I will still stay within the protocol of the house because I'm not a stranger to the house. What a privilege to be here and an honor. Uh, you guys, you've got incredible leaders. I've worked with them and we continue to work with them. And we are just so thankful for what God is doing, especially just to experience the presence of God that is in this place, to see your desires to love God the way you do. That is incredible. We are living at a time when people are falling away. It's like uh, people are downsizing instead of downsizing on their house. You see, when the economy is uh, difficult, people begin to find certain things to cut or to cut the cost. And it's unfortunately that uh, one of the things many people are cutting out is actually God, pursuing God. They feel like God is interfering with your life. He's not interfering with your life. He's come to help you, to assist you. That's why you've been looking at the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our enabler, empowerment that God has sent. Today I want to share with you the word in line with uh, what God has given you and what you, we've been doing since this morning. Uh, the word that the Lord gave me to share with you yesterday was um, help in the valley. Help in the valley. Now, we have to understand that um, in this world, we will have trouble. That's what Jesus said in uh, John uh, 16 verse uh, 33. Uh, he told his disciples, I have told you these things that, so that in me you may have what? Peace. Peace is not the absence of uh, difficulties. Peace is not the absence of uh, challenges. Peace is not the absence of, uh, you know, struggles. In another way, what he was telling them was you will have peace because uh, you have me. And then he says that uh, you will have uh, suffering in this world. Be courageous. I have conquered the world. So in order for us to conquer those things that try to conquer us, guess where we have to be? We have to be with God. That's why Moses would tell God, don't let me go unless you go with us. And that the very first thing that Moses asked God when God had told him to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, that Egypt could be the valley. It was like a valley. It was this valley of slavery, valley of persecution. And for God to take them out of that valley, Moses asked God, if the people ask me, who are you, what shall I tell them? And uh, God revealed himself to Moses and he said, uh, tell them I am as a saint me. Now you have to understand the significance of that revelation of God. I am there is not just a word. In Hebrew, it comes from a word that is called uh, ayah, asha, ayah. Which means I will be who I will be to them in the valley. I will be their rescuer. I will be their deliverer. I will be their savior or salvation. And I want you to understand that things may be difficult. It's not time for you to pull away from God. It's actually time for you to double up on God, to pursue God, to pursue the kingdom of God, and to pursue walking with the presence of God. Because uh, you can be a Christian, and if you don't have the presence of God, or the Holy Spirit working on your behalf or in your life, you can, you can never find strength to go through your struggles. I want to show you a scripture in uh, 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 23 and 22, 28. Uh, we're going to read from the NIV version if you have that portion of scripture. I want to show you something in that portion of scripture. It says, uh, meanwhile, the officials of the king of Aram advised him, their gods are gods of uh, the hills. That is why they were too strong for us. But if we fight them on the plains, surely we will be stronger than they. I want you to know here what's happening here. Israel has been encountering problems and the enemy has constantly been going after them. And they continued defeating their enemy. In another way, they continued to stand. And as they were defeating the enemy, they did not defeat the enemy through their power. It was through the power of God. So here, now the enemy thinks, well, since we've been fighting them on the hills, 
We've been fighting them on the hills. There, their guard of the hills is very strong. Now, right there, I want to give you in your mind to understand what the hills could symbolize here. Remember, the scripture says, uh, we look to the hills. Where does our help come from? So your hill can be when things are going good. Your heel can be when everything is so good and the enemy thinks that there is no way I can pull this person away from God because the God of the heels is assisting this person. So let me tell you something. The enemy will not attack you or come to try and pull you away from God when you are feeling joyful. He comes when you are in the valley, the law of the valley. That's why you have to understand this. Don't just be strong when God is blessing you. Be strong when you are even encountering challenges in your life. Actually, serving God, you have not served God until you are able to serve God when the going is getting tough. When you don't understand where he's taking you. When you don't see what is happening in your life. When you have too many questions, that's what we call standing with God. So here the enemy thinks because the God of the hills, he's been fighting for them. We can never challenge them. Let's take them to the valley. Look what they, it says here, verse 24. 24, it says, uh, do this, remove all the kings from their commands and replace them with uh, other officers. 25, you must also raise an army like the one you lost. Horse for horse, chariot for chariot, so we can fight Israel on the plains. Then surely we will be stronger than they. He agreed with them and acted accordingly. The next spring, Ben, ben Adad mastered the Arameans and went up to Ephak to fight against Israel. 27. When the Israelites were also mastered and given provisions, they marched out to meet them. They marched out to meet them. The Israelites camped opposite them like two small flocks of goats. The Bible is very descriptive. When the Arameans covered the, the, the countryside, then, say then, yes. the man of God. The man of God came up and told the king of Israel, this is what the Lord says. Because the Arameans think the Lord is a God of the hills and not the God of the valley. I will deliver this vast army into your hands and you will know that I am the Lord. We have to understand so many things here. We're going to unpack this real quick. The question we ask in this portion of scripture is uh, first, why did the enemy of Israel try to drag Israel into the valley? If you look up the definition of the valley, it's actually a depressed place. Because the enemy knows when you are depressed, you can't pray fire. You are share, somebody was shelling here with iniquities. When there is some iniquities, there is no way you can pray in tongues and the demons start running away. Actually, they will come all there because you got something for them. So the reason why the enemy had to drag them to the valley, he knows in the valley it's the lowest of the lowest. That's why be careful when you are depressed. Be careful when you are unhappy. Be careful when you have unforgiveness in your heart. Be careful when you are mad. Because when you are mad, you don't smell like sweet aroma. You smell like Mike Tyson. You ready to punch somebody. So the enemy will not jump on you when the Holy Ghost and the power and the presence of God is bubbling like this place today. That's why you know when you leave this place and then uh, you're trying to navigate through the 401 or the traffic of uh, you know, Toronto and then somebody just cuts you off and uh, after they cut you off they give you some sign languages and everything like that and you're just now like so mad. You just came from worshiping God. Why? Because the enemy cannot attack you or fight you when you are at your A game. 
Your A game is when you are worshiping. Your A game is when you are glorifying God. Your A game is when you are praising God. Your A game is when you are standing on the word of God. Your A game is when you declare, I am unshakable by no circumstances. Your A game is when you glorify God, when you look to God, when you wait upon God, when you stand in the word of God. That's your A game. But the enemy won't come at that moment. So we need to understand how to serve God in struggles. Believers are good at serving God when the going is going good. That's why we have a problem now. People are running from place to place to go and search for a prophetic word. No prophet can save you, only Jesus can save you. No man can deliver you, only Jesus can save you. Salvation is only comes from God alone. That's why Israel understood. So the enemy here dragged them to where he dragged them to the valley. The enemy thought God's power is only limited in the hills. The enemy thinks God's power is only limited in this place here. But they forgot that the God of the hills is the same of the God of the valleys. If he can fight on the hills, he can fight in the valley. That's why the Bible declares, even though you go through the valleys of the shadow of death, I shall fear nothing, I shall fear no evil, because thou art with me. Because El Shaddai is with me. Elohim is with me. Yahweh is with me. I shall not fear. The enemy for God, that is God, is a God of all seasons. The Bible describes he sees the end from the beginning. There is nothing that can scare God. There's nothing that can scare God at all. So here we begin to understand something very important here. I get the word. We've got some revelation interpretation. Let me, let me preach like I preach outside. Thank you. Now listen to this. God is not the one who is going to take you into the valley. Jesus was taken into the valley to be tempted by the enemy. But God is specialized to work for our own good in the valley. In the valley, listen, don't be scared to be in the valley. Because it's in the valley, that's where God gives revelation. It's in the valley, that's where God gives ideas. It's in the valley, that's when God will speak to you. Let me tell you something. When the going is getting tough, the manifestation of the voice of God is so stronger in that moment more than when you are jumping and jumping and jumping because you are excited with God and God can't get your attention. That's why I started doing this. Whenever I pray, I pray at the office all the time. And then I'll just keep quiet for the next at least, at least 15 minutes. Why? Because when I'm excited, I'm in my spiritual warfare. Rabba, shaka, rabba. God won't speak to me about what he wants to do. That's why the Bible says what? Wait. To wait for the Lord or to wait in the Lord, it doesn't mean you just, uh, you know, speak and speak and speak and speak. It says uh, wait. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Now listen to this here. The enemy will take you into the valley to go and try and destroy the plans of God. To destroy your self-esteem, your identity, who you are. It will actually even ask you, where is your God? Some of you are going through valleys right now. Valleys of financial difficulties. Valleys in your relationships. Valleys in your marriage. When you are going through the valley, it's not the moment for you to run away. Or to point fingers. Or to do a blame game. Be like Nehemiah. When Nehemiah saw the temple of the Lord destroyed, he took initiative. That's what champions do. 
And we are in a season where God is raising up ordinary people to do extraordinary work for his kingdom. And these ordinary people are those who understand how to serve God in the hills and serve God in the valley. Serve God in the hills and serve God in the valley. In another way, don't have excuses that you've got bad moods. You didn't sleep very well. So your Christianity now is on the corner. Be Christ-like anywhere you go, in anything you do, and in anything you say. Listen, God may not lead you into the valley, but he will use the valley to train you, to strengthen you, to give you directions, to give you a revelation, to empower you, and above all, to mature you. I remember when I was a very young preacher, and uh, God uses me in deliverers, and I see things. Without the maturing spirit, I could go to everybody and just say everything that God told me. Even though God told me that, the person was not ready to receive that. I needed maturity to be able to help the person because the gift is not about yourself. It's about helping other people. So it's in the valley when you feel like you are rejected, when you feel like uh, you are not accepted, when you feel like uh, nobody's acknowledging what you're doing. Stay in the valley and tune in to God and say, God, what is it that you are teaching me in the valley? There is a lot of uh, education in the valley. It gets you ready. Before we are reaching a thousand people. Now we are into millions with millions comes with million trouble. I told somebody that if you're going to do small thing, small things comes with a small criticism. But when you do bigger thing, an incredible thing for God, comes a million criticism. But look, God had, has already been preparing you through the valley. Some of you, you are going through a preparation right now. That problem won't destroy you. That situation you are encountering won't destroy you. But God is going to use it to train you, to prepare you, to make you a powerful woman of God, to make you a powerful man of God, to make you a powerful house. That's what God does. So when you are in the valley, it's not time to cry. It's actually time to look to God. Let me take you to Psalms 12 verse 1 to Psalm 121 verse 1 to 4. Here is what the scripture says. Psalm 121 verse 1 to 4. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? Your help doesn't come from the job you have. Your help doesn't come from your husband, even though they are cool. Your help doesn't come from your wife, even when they are so beautiful. My help comes from who? The Lord. Who made the heaven? He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not what? Slumber. Behold, he, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. What does that scripture tell us? You can be going through the valley. God is not sleeping up on you in the valley. He is still God in the valley and he is still God in the mountains. Let's, let's move quickly here. Psalms 23 verse 4. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger. On a pause right there. This is the psalmist declaring. This is not just a Christianism saying here. This is a man who understands who is with him. Ayah, Asha, Ayah. God will be with you. In the hills, he will be with you. In the valley, he will be with you. When you encounter difficulties, he will be the God who helps you. 
When you encounter happiness, he will be the God who will celebrate with you. Now here, the psalmist says that even when I go through the darkest valley, understand here, it's the darkest valley. That means that things are not working out. Listen, we're in this world, like Jesus said, we are not promised everything is just going to be fine. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will enable you to go through challenges. He will give you wisdom. He will remind you of the words of God. He will remind you of the power you have. He, he will remind you of who you have. That's why Jesus refused to go without sending an helper. He told his disciples, wait here until the Holy Spirit comes to you. Why? The Spirit of God was going to help the people encounter their challenges. In the context of what? Persecution. Now, listen here. Even though I go through the darkest valley, what darkest valley are you going through? I fear no evil. I fear no danger. For you are what? With me. That's the secret right there. Your staff, they comfort me. Sorry, your road and your staff, they comfort me. Let's move quickly here. Second Chronicles 20 verse 17. Second Chronicles 20 verse 17. I can read your translation. Do you have the same translation with me? I'm using now the CSB. I, mean, I study a lot. I study a lot. So I think I can, see, I can see yours there. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up what? Your position. Now, most of us, we want to fight our battles. That's why we keep losing. God did not want you and I to fight our own battles. There are things we can do practically. Let's be people of practical. Yes, you can pray, but be practical as well. Just be praying 24-7 won't solve your problem. Even though prayer is powerful. I tell people, when you've prayed for a job, get your resumes. Start sending them out. Don't start praying these uh, crazy things like, uh, oh, just locate me, locate me. No, God has already located you. Oh, locate me. Let, it, let, let the help it locate me. No, God has already located you. Now rise up and do something as well. That's what the Bible is saying there. God is very practical. We can't just lock ourselves in the house. I'm prayer and fasting 24 7. 24, I'm praying for a job. Come on, get a resume, go get a job, and God will bless the works of your hands. There is no shortcut to the goodness of God. In fact, actually, the anointing of God works even speedily when you are practical. Then we're going to come here and pray for you. And then they are calling you. Oh, we want you to get a job as a manager. Oh, I don't qualify. Oh, the prayers worked. Why? You were out there sending resumes. We have to understand the practical way of God. You have to do something. People are waiting on God to do something. And God is waiting on you to do something. Hallelujah. That's how God works in partnership. God will partner with you. But will you partner with him? Will you take steps out? Here he's telling, he's telling the Israelites, you will, have to, you, 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 you will not have to fight the battle. That doesn't mean that you stay home. Just praying, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. Oh, I'm in my prayer closet. I'm waiting on, the, on God. I've had people that said, what is God doing? They tell me, oh, I'm waiting on God. And then I tell them, God is actually waiting on you. They don't like it. The super spiritual people don't like it. But let me tell you people, God is a practical God. That's why he wants you to go and take up that position in the government. He wants you to take up a position in the city here. He wants you to go and actually do something in that. Because your presence alone can manifest the glory of God in the atmosphere, in the place. He tells them there, you will not have to fight the battle. Take up your position. Oh, I think it's, it's twisted. God, you say I shouldn't fight the battle. But you're telling me, telling me to do what? Take up your position. Taking up your position doesn't mean you are, you're going to actually move and go take up your position. Now look what is going to happen. 
take up your position. Number one, stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Now, that word deliverance there comes from the word save or the word translated to serve, which in Hebrew is uh, Isha, E-Y-E-S-H, Isha. The word Isha simply means uh, to rescue. That's where you get salvation. Listen, salvation is not only from uh, sin and the power of death. Salvation is from anything that tries to coil itself around you that is not of God. God will give you both a physical and spiritual salvation. He will rescue you from the power of the enemy. So the word there, it says that you will, have, you, you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the rescuing power or the deliverance power. Other translation translates that word like what? Salvation of the Lord. Judah and Jerusalem. Sorry, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not what? Do not fear or dismay. Why? Because, first of all, God is with them. And then he tells them, tomorrow, say tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow, go out. But God, it doesn't make sense. If you say you're going to fight the battle, why do I have to go to the battle line? Yeah, God wants you on the battle line. Because God wants to show off and show out his glory through an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you cannot say that you don't have the power to fight because you are not the one who fights. God just wants you to be there so that he can show off and show out through you. Oh my goodness. Let, let's go to Psalms quickly. Psalms 62 verse 1. Verse 1 to 2 here. We, we're almost done. Here is what the psalm is. You have to understand David. David was a man who was in trouble. He was a man who was going through the valleys of shadow of death throughout. The enemy was pursuing him throughout. But David understood one thing. There was help from God. My help came from God. Help in the valley. It says here, I want to read your translation because I've got a different one. Truly my soul silently say silently there is no mumbling there there is no like a why me lord why, why why this why it's always us in why i don't get like why why because you have too many whys you can't hear the answer from god it just says there truly my soul silently works for god from him comes what my salvation that word when you see that word salvation it simply means what rescuing so david what david was saying is truly my soul is silently works on god why because from god rescue comes from god deliverance comes from God, my help comes. Listen, even if we're to worry about your challenges you are going through today, the Bible says not even a single worry can sort out your problem. What sorts our problem is to wait on the Lord. Is to wait on the Lord. My translation says this. I am at rest in God alone. Actually, put on verse 2. Let's go to 2. It says, uh, he only is what? Is my rock and my salvation. He is what? My defense. My, I shall not what? I shall not be greatly moved. My question to you is, what is moving you right now? What is moving you right now? I believe we're going to pray before we, you know, I hand over the service to the man of God here. That uh, as you're going through the valley, through that valley, God, best moment comes through the valley. Hallelujah. The greatest moment with God, the greatest manifestation of the power of God, I've seen them in the valley. 
and the vision that you see my wife and I do came through the valley. When we were pinned to the corner, not knowing where to go, where, where we thought our doors were here, God shut them down. Why? Because some, some of us, God needs to shut us down. Some of you, you need to know a moment where he shuts you in so that he can show you what he wants to do with your life. He wants to show you what, how great you can do for his kingdom. Isaiah 40 verse 31. When you're going through a valley season, don't panic. Don't be afraid. Wait. Trust on the Lord. Here is Isaiah 40 verse 31. What does it say? But those who wait on the Lord. That is a specific instruction. Only those who will wait. Now to wait here is to patiently waiting for the rescuing or the salvation or the deliverance of God. I have people that say, Pastor, I've prayed and prayed about this and, and it doesn't change. And then I say, because you are actually praying with the wrong motive. The only thing you are interested in from God is to solve your problem instead of worshiping you. God is not a vending machine that you go to only to get something. God wants a relationship. You go to him to glorify him, to magnify him, to worship him, to honor him, to praise him, to tell him you love him. Despite what is going on, then you going to see the manifestation of God. God is not a vending machine that we just go and push a button. I need Coca-Cola. I need this problem done. And then if I don't see this, then I go to the other prophet out there. And then they manipulate you with the oil. No oil can deliver you. No oil can change your circumstances. Only change comes by the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Only Jesus can save. Only Jesus can change a situation. Only Jesus can deliver. That's why 2,000 years ago, he went on the cross of Calvary and Jesus cried out, Tetelestai. It means it is finished. He did it on the cross. That means no man, no power can save you from any situation other than Jesus Christ. That is the good news. That is the good news. The good news is that salvation has come to us. The good news is that you may be in the valley. Help has come for you. The good news is that you may be struggling. It doesn't mean you don't love God. Just because you are struggling doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. Just because you are going through certain things, it doesn't mean you have sinned. Just because you are struggling, it doesn't mean there is sin or curse. The Bible says that he nailed that curse at the cross with the details of it. All the obligation of the curse. That was on it. Jesus nailed it to the cross. That means salvation is only in Jesus Christ. That means deliverance is only in Jesus Christ. I may go through the valley. I'm not afraid. Why? Because of, of who is with me in the valley. It may be dark moments in there. I may be depressed. I may feel stressed. I may feel depressed. But I'm not crushed down. Why? Because of the one who is with me. I have Jesus with me. I have Jesus with me. I shall not fear. I shall not be afraid. Because he goes for me into the battle. Keep praying, my brother. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Keep praying there. Keep playing. Keep playing. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like the eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. We do not faint because we have Jesus Christ. We do not faint because we have Jesus Christ. I may be battling cancer, but cancer, you are just a name. I will not fold. I will not faint because Jesus is bigger than cancer. Jesus is bigger than my trouble. Jesus is bigger than depression. Jesus is bigger than my troubles. Those who trust in the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. Your strength is being renewed. You may not have money today, but your strength is being renewed. Because Jesus conquered it all. Jesus conquered it all. 
Jesus conquered it all. Jesus conquered it all. He is your conqueror. He is your salvation. He is your deliverer. Hallelujah. You may be going through a valley right now. Your marriage may be going through the valley right now. Your relationship may be going through the valley right now. Even your relationship with God, you have got one leg in the kingdom and one leg out of the kingdom. But I hear the voice of the living God say today, today is the day you come into the kingdom. The kingdom of light, the kingdom of deliverance, the kingdom of help, the kingdom of deliverance and salvation. It doesn't matter what you are going through right now. It doesn't matter what is going on in your life. I have good news for you that Jesus of the valley is the same Jesus of the hills. Jesus of all the hills sicknesses is the same Jesus that can deliver you. Today I want you to understand God wants to renew your strength today. Just one scripture before we go here. Isaiah 25 verse 9. Just stand. Isaiah, I want us to read together if you can look on the screen. Let's make a declaration, a declaration of God here. We're going to read together. Look at the screen or take up your phones and do this here. I want to show you something here. We don't worship God or follow God or serve God or preach the word of God because everything is good. We don't follow Jesus Christ just because everything is good. Don't mistake my joy as the absence of trouble and absence of difficulties. My joy is not descriptive of what is going on. My joy is descriptive of Yahweh, El Shaddai, Elohim, the God of the valley, the God who helps us in times of trouble, the God who never slumbers, the God who never leaves us, nor forsake us. Tell those people that says, why are you happy and you don't have no money? Money is not my happiness. I could use it all, thank you. But if I don't have it, I am not dead. I am alive to Jesus Christ. Just because I don't have any material thing, it doesn't mean Jesus doesn't love me. Just because you don't have a good car doesn't mean that you are not loved by God. God loves you regardless of who you are, what you've done, where you've been, what you have. He is your God. Hallelujah. Your blessings are not descriptive of what you have. Yes, God will prosper you. God will give you things. But what do you do when you don't have the prosperity? What do you do when you don't have that which you are looking for? Oh my goodness, we do not serve God for material things. We do not serve God for any other reason. We serve God because of the good news. The good news of our Savior. That's why I love this church. I love this church. I love your pastor. And I love you as well. Let me tell you something. What I'm moved about this church today. There is no many places here in Canada or North America right now that going to gather for such a long time as you have dedicated today. We give God 20 minutes and expect God to do the supernatural with 20 minutes. We have cut on God. And yet we want God to pour out upon us. It's like we seek God just for the things we can get from Him. And God is saying, I want to develop a relationship with you. I want to walk with you. I want to be with you even in the valley. I want to walk with you. I came, I created you, not to you, to walk all by yourself. The Bible declares... That a virgin will conceive and he will give birth to a son and he shall be named Emmanuel, God with us. It was never intention of God for you to walk alone in the valley, for you to walk alone in your life. God wants to be with you. That's why the Bible declares 
if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. What is humility we're talking about here? Is leveling God above everything. An awe strike wonder of God. That God, you are all that we want. Yes, we want you to help us with money. We want you to help us with things. But you are more than things of a father. You are more than things of God. You are bigger than money. You are bigger than money. You are our God. You are our God. There is a revival coming. And this awakening and refreshment that is coming is of the people who are going to love Jesus more than anything. God is saying you are not meant to walk alone. A car cannot make you happy. I'm not saying a car is bad. That's why the Bible declares, seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these things you need will be given to you. But when you have the kingdom of God, you have the kingdom power. You have kingdom deliverance. You have kingdom salvation. You have somebody fighting for you. And we say, God is fighting for us. I want us to read this scripture and we're going to end before the man of God comes. I feel an unction. There are many of you, you are going through the valley. You haven't shared no, 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 no with nobody. There are things that are going on in your life you haven't shared with nobody. You feel lonely. You are depressed. You've been battling depression and stress all by yourself. You get out there as if all is all good. But God is saying, don't struggle in silence. Your struggle in silence ends today. Because God is giving you deliverance. God is restoring your joy. God is restoring the sense of purpose in you. The sense of life. Why you, why you exist. Just because you don't have a job, it shouldn't cause you to be depressed. Let's go to the scripture we're supposed to read. Let's go to that Isaiah. I want us to, de to declare something in the spiritual realm right now. The power of waiting on God. The power of waiting on God. Isaiah 25 verse 9. Let's read together at the count of two. One, two, go. I don't know if you read that scripture the way it should be. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for Him. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Keep waiting on God. 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 Don't say it has taken too long. Don't say God it has taken too long. Keep waiting on God. God is renewing your strength. Just reach, reach out. Lift up those hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lift up those hands. In the name of Jesus. I speak strength. I speak divine strength. 
I speak divine strength, divine help, divine sustenance, divine strength. I declare the power of the living God upon each one of us right now. I declare the God, the glory of God upon each one of us right now. That we declare we have waited on the Lord for it shall be said in that day that we have waited for our Lord and he has come to save us. Save us Jesus. Save your people. Save us Jesus. Save us Jesus. Save us Jesus. Save us. Save us. Save us. Oh salvation in this place. Salvation in this place. Will you lift up your hands? Right? He's the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone is worthy of our praise. God knows, 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 God knows. said as you call it altered at the altar 
or changed at the altar. And I saw the whole congregation at the altar of God kneel down, crying to him. And so right now, with nobody exempted, the altar of God is open. All over. You're going to come. Whatever you want to do, just come. If you want to, but just come. Everyone, come. Come, everyone. Everyone, move forward so that there will be space. Move forward. And sing the song. Wow. Just sing the same song. The worshipers can sing, keep singing the song. And as we wait on the Lord, there's space here. There's space there. There's space all over. Yes. My God. If there's no space that you can do the race, that's fine. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Please, if there are people outside, let them come in. They can wait. Anything can wait. Let everyone. I wish we can bring the children in. Let everyone be here. As we are chained at the altar of God. Telling him we are nothing. But in his altar we are changed. In this altar we are transformed. That as we wait on the law, our strength is renewed. Our sins are forgiven. Our strength is renewed. There's a change. Tell him, I need you, Lord. 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 Cry out to him. I don't know why you need him to change, but I'm telling you, if he changes you, everything else can change. If he transforms you, everything can be transformed. If he makes you a new person, everything will change in your hand. Oh, my God. Say, Lord, transform me. Whatever is not of you, I leave it at the altar. Whatever needs to be changed, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Hey, Abashada Hatia. Imana Hatel Abahatia. Ikoseli Mahat de Borosia. Hey, Lokodi Bilihat. You cry out to him, Lord. I don't want to leave you the same. I don't want to be the same Christian. I don't want to be the same husband. I don't want to be the same boss. I don't want to be the same preacher. I don't want to be the same son. I don't want to be the same brother. I don't want to be the same woman. I, I want to leave you changed. But I can only be changed at your altar, Lord. Lord, Lord. Lord. Ah. Ah. Oh, Jesus, help us. Ah. Whatever is not of you, Lord. Whatever is not of you, Lord. Whatever is not of you, Lord. Ah. Oh, Jesus. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. I don't want to go back the same. I don't want to be the same Christian. Oh, Jesus. Cry out to him. I don't want to have.
have the same callous heart. I don't want to have the same stingy heart. I don't want to have the same broken heart. I don't want to carry the cancer anymore. I don't want the diabetes anymore. I don't want the shame anymore. I don't want the pain anymore, Lord. Yes, it's okay. You can cry out to him. Oh, 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 cleanses by the spirit, by your word, by the blood. I don't know how you're going to call him. Just cry out to him. Jesus, have mercy on me. The Bible says that the man came to you and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Will you cry out, Jesus, and Jesus, have mercy on me. Come on, lift up your voice, cry on him. Let the place be filled with Jesus. Jesus, let's not change the song. Sing the same. Raise, stay the same place. Kabbalah Hatiya. Leko de Barata. Say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David. Jesus, thou son of David. Upward is the Lamb of God who sits upon your throne. He alone is worthy. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him. He says, I will show you great and mighty things. Which you do not know. He says, I'll show you great and mighty things. God is showing you something. He's revealing you to you. He's the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone is worthy of our praise. Oh, 
Call it, say Jesus. Jesus. Say, call Jesus. Jesus. All over this place, shout Jesus. Jesus. Call on him, Jesus. Jesus. Call on him, Jesus. Jesus. Yes, call on him, Jesus. Jesus. Call on that name. It says, of things in heaven, Philippians 2 verse 9. Of things on earth, of things under the earth, they fall. They bow. Call on Jesus. 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 Let me pray. Master is here. The master is here. The master is here. The master is here. The master is here. Call on him. Yes. 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 You are receiving it. Today we want him. We want him. We want his person. We want him. We want him. We are sick and tired of goosebumps. We are sick and tired of faith miracles. We are sick and tired of fake miracles. We want Jesus, the healer, the deliverer. us. We give ourselves to you. In the name of Jesus. Our heart is yours. Our heart is yours. Our lives are yours. Please focus on yourself. We are changed at the altar. We are made whole at the altar. We are delivered at the altar. We are healed. Now, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Receive the fire of God. Receive the fire of God. Receive from my left side to my right side. Let the fire now sit upon everyone. Let the fire sit upon everyone. Let the fire right now, yes. Let the fire, let the evidence of the Pentecost be present even right now. Let the fire sit upon you. Receive the fire, fresh fire, fresh fire for the service of the kingdom. Receive it. Fresh fire. That's right, right there, right there. Receive fire, fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost. That which consumes, that which is not of God. It sits upon you. Some of you, you can feel the heat of God all over you. Yes, it's the evidence. Some of you, you can feel that there is something, there's a shift
So eternal Father, take all the glory, take all the honor. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for encountering our hearts and lives. We will never be the same. Lord, burn what is not of you from this house. Burn whatever is not of you from this house. Burn whatever is not of me. Whatever is not of our leaders. Whatever is not of you from our workers. Let it be consumed by the fire. May we not present to you the accursed things. May we not present to you bronze, but gold. Now, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our Redeemer. You alone is deep. It's worthy of praise. Thank you for altering us at the altar. Thank you that our sacrifice our, our self is the living sacrifice and you have accepted us you did not accept the offering of the man of God because you did not accept him but for the one that you accepted you accepted him and his offering so accept us Lord in the name of Jesus Amen Amen Amen. 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 You may be seated. You are the Lamb of God who sits upon your throne. He alone is worthy of my praise. Consecrate you to the service of the ministry. Then you'll be ready for service this year. Serving God from a different mindset. Serving God from a different heart. A different spirit. From a different place. place of humility and service to Jesus. Yes, go ahead and serve the people of God. Let the team go ahead. But when you receive it, please hold on to it. Elder Ken, please help them for me. Yes, and Brother Clyde, please. You know, what the Lord is doing here, generations will come and eat of this well thank you Jesus thank you Jesus the communion is for intimacy and fellowship with one another you know I want you to hold on to the communion today. I want to show you something as the Lord revealed to me. And then we will, we will 
will do what is next. You know, the communion is koinonia, a place of intimacy and fellowship. And I want you to hear me and listen to this. I will make sure that when the leaders and the workers finish, then I will share this with you. You know, you cannot eat with me and you don't love me. That's wickedness. You cannot eat with me and there is wickedness at the back of your mind. And so when we come to the place of communion, we are saying to one another, we are one. He says we are in fellowship with one another. That is why we are warned that we are not to enter into it inadvisedly. We are not to rush in taking the communion because for, for that reason many are weak. Not because they are weak, because they were weak because they had unforgiveness and they would not repent. They are weak because one person is sitting beside them and they don't talk to them. In a minute, I'm going to give a charge to everyone in this room right now. And it's a charge. It's not a suggestion. If there is anyone in this room you don't talk to, I charge you by the mercy of God. You fix it right now. If there is anyone you are not in good terms with, I charge you. You work it out now. Because I will not encourage you to take this specific communion. I will not encourage you. If there is anyone in this place you have not forgiven, don't take this communion. Don't take this communion because this is a place of intimacy with one another. And if there is anyone that has offended you, you know it, but they don't know. And when you see them, you walk away. And you pretend like everything is okay. You go and tell them right now. You hurt me. You didn't know. But I forgive you. And you the receiver. You accepted in love. And you hug the person. Are you hearing me? You are not hearing. Are you hearing me? And if there is anyone you need to call. The moment the service is done. You call them. Because what God is going to do with us in this church will shock this city. But you see, we are a church and we are united. And if one piece is not working, all of us are broken. The weakest one among us makes all of us weak. This is not the moment to think that I am so righteous. No. This is not the moment to think. And so, I charge you. Can we stand on our feet? If there is anyone you need to go and talk to, talk to them now. You know, this is what church is. If there is anyone you need to talk to, talk to them now. Help her. Help her sit down. If there is anyone you need to talk to right now, go and talk to them. Maybe they hurt you. Maybe disrespected you. You thought. They didn't even know. But you've kept them in your heart. Go and talk to them. Talk to them. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. Go. Go. Yes. And, and there is no, nothing to look around. You are not looking at anyone. You are not looking. Don't look at anyone. Look at yourself as I look at myself. This is not a time to point fingers. As a matter of fact, can we all close our eyes? If there is no one to go talk to, let's all close our eyes. So that those that need to talk to someone can talk to them. 
there should never be anyone who is not in right fellowship among us. So the enemy can use it against us. God forbid. nothing against you. Nothing, 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 nothing. I love you. 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 He just said he was speaking against us. said in the night in which Jesus was betrayed he took the bread and when he had given thanks he said take eat. this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me and likewise when he had taken the cup he said this cup is a new covenant in my blood as often as you drink this cup you do show the Lord's death to you comes Father we repent first of all for not receiving you the way we are to receive you and we repent for treating each other the way we treat each other the way we deal with each other forgive us and Lord we forgive one another because we are one we are, we are one. You call us as a family, as a church, we are family. And we are not letting anything stand in between us. No one, no human, no boy, no girl. And so, Holy Spirit, thank you for the moment of unity. Now, as we take of this bread, Whatever is broken, whoever is broken, make it whole, Lord. Make them whole, Lord. And make us whole as a church. Lord, we are one another's keeper. We are our brother's keeper. Thank you for helping us. Four. Stand in four. You can move your chair. You can move not your chair, but just stand in four people. Yes, just four people. Four. You can move out of your chair. Stand in four. Yes, just four. Just four. And then face each other. Face each other. Face each other. Stand in four. As I can, I want you to move your, 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 your team. Let them join another team. And then let another team join you. <laughs> yes. Hold, face each other if you can. Please, Brother Clyde, can you join that one so they are four? Okay, they are good there. Awesome. There's a lot of team there. Four. And face each other. We are dining together. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is just a symbol of us eating together. I don't need to come from your mother's house. But in Christ you are my brother. In Christ you are my sister. I love you. You love me. We are one. We are one. Please take the bread and eat it together. Yeah, let's go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Online, please take any juice, any bread, and just pray and just join us in the same spirit. The Bible says that then when he had taken the cup, he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. After often as you drink it, you do show the Lord's death to you, he'll come. Friends, people of God, Jesus is coming, but he's coming for a church without blemish or wrinkle. And you and I will be the church that he will come for. The sanctified, set apart, anointed and equipped church. And in unity and in oneness, as we fellowship together, this is like the greatest buffet we can ever have. Father, let this cup bring our unity and our heart for you and our heart for souls in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead. Please, you can go to your seat. to give the agenda for the year but I know you are prepared to to saw and do very well this year yes by your God you will run through troops and by your God you will leap over walls I'm going to pray for everyone but I will do the special anointing for the workers on Vision Sunday. 
is, is set it right. Amen. On Vision Sunday, which is next Sunday, I'll pray for all. But today I want to pray for everyone that serves everywhere. And then on next week, we will introduce to you people that will be handling different ministries. Those that you will be reporting to. Those that will be leading different departments. Because a house without structure, without order, is a house with open door. And this year, one of the things the Lord wants us to do is what we call systems and structures and order. Where everyone knows their place in the house of God. The scripture says that there was a season in time where the people were doing what was right in their own eyes. Gone were the days that when things will happen. They can never happen at faith in the name of Jesus. Never. Never. So to, to the point that when someone misbehaves, you will know this one is misbehaving. That is how much the spirit of order and structure is going to be in this house. It's already here because the Holy Ghost flows in order. Hallelujah. 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 We have just 20 minutes to go home. Can you clap onto the Lord for yourself? I have to preach. No. <laughs> I'm supposed to preach in my session, but I believe the Holy Ghost has done what he has to do. <laughs> Say we make quality control. Say we make quality control. 2023 2023 is a year that is ahead of you, full of success, greatness, anointing, power, and good news. The Lord said to me, no product is manufactured or when it's manufactured, goes out without going through quality control. before your car can go out they have to do what they call quality control test it goes through a process and then it goes through reviewers and then it goes through a third party who is not with the organization so that they can vet in a very real way in truthful way whether the product meets standard or it's going to kill someone. Before I pray for you, for the next 10 minutes, I want to talk to you about quality control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, we came here today because God wanted to prepare us for the harvest of 2023. For the miracles, signs and wonders, power, the glory, the anointing. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus is saying that he's building his church. And he mentions a name there. And that name is not your name, so you put your name there. So, so he says, and I also say to you, George, you are, it's you. You put your name there. I am building my church and the gate of hell shall never prevail against it. Can you mention your name? One, no, when I say one, two, three, you mention your name. One, two, three, George. One, two, three. 
And God is saying, George, you are the one I'm building my church. And the gate of hell shall never prevail against such church. So if I am the one and you are the one and we are the one, God is going to build his church. Then tonight and today, we want to go through few quality control processes that will cause us to build the building Jesus is looking for properly in 2023. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Your amen is suspicious. Are you there? I'm not going to give, I'm just, because I'll teach it maybe next time when the Holy Ghost stirs me up. But I want to give you a few of the quality control system for 2023 for us as a church and the body of Christ and a part of the kingdom and the move of God, God is entrusting us. Number one, what is the first process of quality control we're going to look into? Humility and pride. Humility and pride. The Bible says that pride goes before a fall. Humble yourself. So if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. He that exalt himself shall be abased and he that, you know, humble himself shall be exalted. The first quality control as a people, a pastor, a leader, a worker, a member, a father, a mother, a friend, the first quality control system that we need to go through, do I meet the standard of Jesus? And remember, the standard is not what a church provides. The standard is not what a people provide. But the standard is what Jesus, the one who died and his blood was shed on the cross, the one he set for us. And so the first one is and guess what? It is pride that makes us say certain things. It is pride that makes you say you can't forgive anyone. It is pride that makes you sit in the house of God and not serve. It is pride that makes you say whatever God says, you know better. So if he says do this, you will do this. It's pride. And so when we come to a place of quality control, the word of God vets us and, 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 and it strains us through the sieve of his word. And he says that for the year of good news, I want my people humble and I want to take away the pride. Lift your hand and say, Lord, have mercy on me. I humble myself. You see, God doesn't humble us because God's agenda of humbling us is humiliation. And so you never pray, God, humble me. Wrong prayer. No, you'll be in trouble. You say, Lord, grace to humble my. Number two, second quality control. I call it quality seed. Talk to me. What is it? Quality seed. Now remember in life, everything is a seed. Your time is a seed. Your talent is a seed. Your health can be a seed. Your children are seeds. Your marriage is a seed. Uh, your ministry that God puts in your hand is a seed. Depending on what you treat a seed, it will tell you whether it will become a prosperous plant or it will die in its seed state. And many things that God gives us, he gives us in the form of a seed. And so I want to talk to you about quality seed. Will you make your time this year as a quality seed to the Lord? Will you make your talent as a quality seed unto the Lord? Will you make your health as a quality seed unto the Lord? Will you make your service unto the Lord a quality seed? Quality seed, it must go through quality control. Does it meet the standard of heaven? Does it meet the standard of heaven? Is it only, are you doing it to impress a man? Or are you doing it because you want to be part of the building God is building? Quality seed. Isn't it amazing that the kingdom has made it in such a way that when you talk about seed, the first thing that goes to people's mind is money. And yet that is the lowest form of seed 
in the quantum of seeds. When you, when you align all the seeds that are available in the, in the kingdom, money is the lowest. It's the lowest, but it's powerful. <laughs> yes, it's low, but it is powerful. Oh, yes. Please, ask God to give you money. Yes. Yes, ask him. Yes. Oh, yes. This year, ask God to give you idea to create wealth. Do you know God doesn't give money? He gives ideas. Don't go to God. God, give me money. Say, Lord, give me power. Then the power will create wealth. Amen? Amen. Number three. Quality praise and worship. This year, your praise must be different. You want to be the vessel that will propagate the good news? The quality control is quality praise and quality worship. Let your life, you no longer praise with your mouth only, but your life is a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable sacrifice. Quality control. Nothing goes out without going through it. And so I can assure you, by the time you leave out of this door, you are ready to soar. You are ready to take territories. You are ready to become all what God has created you to be. Because you've gone through the quality control system of heaven. Quality praise, quality worship. It means the way you serve God with your praise this year will be different. Oh man, you will praise him with everything. Listen, at home, you don't need a song. You just dance. You just praise God. You don't wait for things to happen. You happen and then the things happen. Hey, you didn't hear what I said. I said, you happen and the thing will follow. Oh, you are going to happen. If that is in English. You, you are going to happen. Glory. Quality praise. Number four. Quality relationships. For some of you, what is stopping you from serving God the way you are too is because you don't have quality relationship. You have this mindset that all church people are boring, especially the young people. They will save you from trouble. And my, my favorite is my, my favorite is those of you that are ready to marry. Oh, church people, pastor, you know, church people, me, I want them rough. You want them rough. Wait till they slap you. Wait till they slap you. You want them rough. Now, you don't know what I hear in my office. Pastor, you know, these church people, they are just too nice. So, to live... So, you don't want someone that will give you peace in your home. You want someone that will come and give you pepper in your eye. Quality relationships. In marriage, in business in ministry, in friendship. Let me tell you something. God, certain people, you are going to go and move them. Yes. I'm not saying don't talk to them, but they are not the ones that are going to be your number one because they have not been good to you. Now, those of you that are married, if you are married, they are the one. Don't go and say, but, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are married, go and work it out. Amen. Amen. The pastor Ed can they go home and say, Pastor said, some people must be moved out. Oh, you mountain, be moved in the... No, 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 no. Go and work it out. Amen? 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 You know, church people, they can tell you stuff. You know the things people hear when we are talking? There's sometimes people will come, Pastor, the word was powerful. I say, what was powerful? You know, what you preached was so powerful. Oh, my. So, what did I preach? Oh, Pastor, it was so powerful. I said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So awesome. Thank God. What did I preach? You know, uh, um, you know, uh, it was powerful. They didn't hear. They did not hear. All they knew is that they were emotionally charged. But I'm not here to emotionally charge you. No, I'm here to give you instructions. And if obeyed, it gives you success. Joshua 1.8. Amen. Still watching my time. We will still live here too. Glory. 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 
quality relationships. You want to pray and say, Lord, bring to me destiny relationships. And for some of you, go and pray. Lord, reveal certain things to me. God will show you certain things. Not to go and point figure. Ah, that, that, that. No, 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 no. Wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to know things and keep composed. There are many people, they are not spiritually wise. When they know, then it changes everything. No, the ability to know and still compose is what makes you wise. You will know this year. Number five, quality service. Quality service. Quality control. Quality service. Anyone that was great in the Bible, God called them my servant. My servant Moses. My servant David. My servant Paul. You see them being called servant. And they were great. Quality service. This year, you ought to serve God with your life. Serve his house. Let us see your work. Let something be done and we can say that. You know, when, when the young man over there, when he's playing, don't you feel it? Yes. Clap onto the Lord for his life. As a matter of fact, let's clap for everyone. Play something. <laughs> you know, they, they are doing outstanding. They are doing really well. But their service can be felt. And this year, one of your quality control is your service unto God. And this is where Christians sometimes mess up. We serve God by serving men. We serve God by serving his house. But there are some people, you know, Pastor, me, I want to serve God, you know. It's like those that says, me, I, I, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't report or I don't, you know, I speak to God, you know, I speak to God. And I say, no problem, speak to God. But God uses servants to stand so that you can. Okay, let me ask you a question. How come the electricity company doesn't bring their electricity directly from the wire, from the main source to your house? It will blow you up. And so God has an electricity system where he uses his servants. So, for example, God puts us here as pastors and God gives us elders and leaders. And then we pick uh, department heads. Department heads will have assistants. They will also have people they will work with. And then the people they work with will work with other people. And we all flow in unison. No one breaking ranks. They all working in tandem, flowing. And the building, Jesus is building, becomes explosive. He says, I will build my church. And he builds his church with you and me. Six minutes, so I will continue next time. I'm not going after the time. Amen. Amen. Please, can you help me appreciate Dr. Kazumba and his wife for the awesome work? Thank you so much. Help me appreciate the musicians. Help me appreciate our media team. Help me appreciate our workers all around. There are people working, you can't see them. Let's appreciate the ushers, the protocol, the worshippers. Come on, clap onto the Lord for their life. Thank you, Lord. Nicola, I, she does so well. Let's appreciate it. And then, help me appreciate God for your life. Come on, for your life. Come on, clap for your life. Please help me appreciate Pastor Harriet. I, I thought you would be louder. Help me appreciate it. You know, that lady works a lot, works really hard. Because you see, you know, I had to receive this program. We didn't just sit down to say, oh, C, 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 one, two, three. No. 
you have to receive it. And then when you receive it, you have to believe God who? And then you have to believe God what song? Then you have to believe God at what point? How must it flow? Who prays? How must they pray? And afterwards, Lord, what will you do in the midst? And then after us, it works together. Can you thank the Lord for his mercy upon faith? Are we anointing people, right? Okay. How many? Please, the same team that did the communion, let me pray over it. One and two is not enough. We need a many, 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 because we are doing this in less than three minutes. Hallelujah. 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 Can we stand on our feet? Now, I'm, I'm going to ask you, if you want to give, if you want to give, you will, after the communion, after the anointing oil, I will ask some of the team to give the envelopes and then some of them to pass around the oil. So those of you with the oil, come quickly. Let me pray over it so we can go. Those of you with the oil, those of you with the oil, quickly, quickly. Father, we know that it is your spirit that gives life. Father, now we declare, bring the oil. I pray over this oil. They are no longer ordinary oil. It's an oil that carries your word. It's an oil that carries your anointing. As they touch it, it heals them. It delivers, it sets free in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please go ahead, take each one, take, and then go ahead and pass it on. Touch and put it on your forehead. And believe God for whatever you are going through. The anointing of preservation, of healing, of deliverance, of breakthrough. Those of you online, take oil. We pray over it and we declare in the mighty name of Jesus. You are healed. If you are sick, you are healed. You are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do we have the envelopes, please? Amen. Father, we pray over these envelopes. Let it be a seed of transformation as it changes us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, can you go ahead? Whatever you desire to give, go ahead and pass it on. Yes, let them take it. Yeah. Give, can we have, Ella Ken, can Hello, you pass Faith. it? Thank you for worshiping with us today. Here are some ways to give or partnership with us. For in-person, visit the church at 1967 Leslie Street, North York, Ontario, M3B to M3, Tuesdays to Friday, 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Mail your seed and donations at 1967 Leslie Street, North York, Ontario, M3B to M3. Please write your full name. For online, give on our website at faithinternational.ca. Tap and click on the give button and fill in the forms with your payment Jesus, information. Jesus, may the Lord bless you today. Shout amen. amen. As the word says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Today, in the name of Jesus, your strength has been renewed. You will run through troops and leap over walls. You are blessed in your going out. You are blessed in your coming in. The hand of the Lord is with you. This year you will serve the Lord with gladness. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. You will enjoy good news. The power of God will flow through you. You will not be sick this year. No accident this year. Doors will open for you. In the name of Jesus, it shall be well with you. Favor will follow you. Enjoy the anointing of this house. May the hand of God be upon you. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. 
If you believe it, shout amen. Now, Pastor Harriet, come so that I am relieved. I, I covenanted with God, I will leave the stage at two. So I have done it. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, isn't it so sweet to trust in Jesus? Isn't it so sweet to sit at his feet? I want to say thank you so much for your dedication. For all the ministers, may the Lord bless you. Rich word, sound word, wisdom, great advice. May the Lord bless you. Please note, we have officially ended our fast. Amen. Hallelujah. That is good news. That's good news. That is good news. So, I, I, everyone is just excited. Hallelujah. So that means that we are back to our regular scheduling. We will only be having... <laughs> the interpreter is so happy <laughs> that we've ended the fast. <laughs> we will go back to our morning prayers only from 6 in the morning. Jesus' encounter will continue on Tuesdays at 7. Our impartation service will be on Wednesdays at 7. And we continue as the Lord leads us on celebration service. Please take the joy, the strength, the anointing to your homes. And keep glorifying God. We truly love your commitment. And we love that you love Jesus. Until tomorrow morning, go and enjoy the blessings of God. Hallelujah. We bless you. Those that have their seats, just go ahead and drop it at the altar. Online worshipers will love you. The testimonies are coming and we will celebrate. Have a good afternoon. Hello, Faith. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Here are some ways to give or partnership with us. For in-person, visit the church at 1967 Leslie Street, North York, Ontario, M3B to M3, Tuesdays to Friday, 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Mail your seed and donations at 1967 Leslie Street, North York, Ontario, M3B to M3. Please write your full name. For online, give on our website at faithinternational.ca. Tap and click on the Give button and fill in the forms with your payment information and submit. For e-transfer, give at faithinternational.ca. Please include your full name and email for received tax purposes. Text to give. Text give to 289 216 4715 and enter the amount.